What's up, guys? Welcome to the third episode of As the Coals Burn. Uh, it's been a while. We've kind of been trying to get our schedules together. Uh, Hayden has been busy with his band lately. Uh, they're really kicking it and killing it. And Try. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's been great. Uh, they had a show this last night, yesterday. Uh, really blew the roof off the building at over 10 balls. Uh, we tried. Yeah, it was <laughs> we tried. Uh, anyway, uh, my name's Nick. Uh, again, I'm a regular here at Cloud. Uh, your host uh, for the, this podcast. And then we got Hayden Gibbs. Of course, I, just, I work here. Yeah. That's all there is to it. I just work here. Um, it's been a while. Again, like I said, we're trying to get our schedules together. We're uh, trying to do a new kind of routine of trying to get this out. Uh, podcasts are going to be shot every other Sunday and then released on the, the following Monday. Uh, and then we're going to start getting some daily content uh, once I get situated and uh, I'm looking at moving to Bowling Green myself. And hopefully so. in the future some vlog content from him just to... Just for fun. Hopefully, I gotta start getting used to being in front of a camera and uh, not so awkward. You know, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> that pause was left there for a purpose. Oh, okay. Uh, just, uh, just I wasn't doing it just for jokes. We'll a couple of but let's just jump in on this. Anyway, uh, the um, course says the coals burn. We're smoking hookah. Definitely, we've got hookah. Uh, within the three week break that we've been on, I've actually picked up vaping. Uh, I know that's, pull up that way. I'll show them what you got. It's starting to get popular here and everywhere around. I mean, it's been popular for a while. I've got a cuboid. Uh, it's a 150 watt, but with the firmware that you download, it comes up to a 200 watt. On top, I have a TVF4 uh, from Smok, Smoke, however you want to say it, S-M-O-K. Uh, I'm running the, uh, the three coil uh, bill that you can get. I also have the upgrade uh, sitting in my truck. Uh, to make it an RDA. Uh, Me personally, I've been vaping for a couple of years. I have an IPv4S with an authentic Troll V2 Addy. Um, I enjoy it. You know, it's just something to do. You know, when you're not smoking hookah, it's something. And yeah, that's you're avoiding cigarettes, basically. Definitely, if you're avoiding cigarettes. Now, that's the thing. Like, we, we started off this podcast, and I'm, I've been smoking hookah for, since I was 17. I'm 24 now. So that's what, that's quite a while. I can't do math. Um, yeah, like the day I turned 18, I started smoking hookah. Yeah, my 17th birthday was my first day I had hookah. Uh, but hookah, it's the, the whole setup and everything, it's hard to, to take around with you. But with the, with the vape, it's, it's actually really, it fits in your hand. It's really nice. Uh, I've actually enjoyed bringing the vape around more. And you can smoke the vape in places that you can't bring a hookah. You can't be driving around and smoking a hookah. Well, you can. They have that one that sits in the cup holder. Have you ever seen that? I've heard of it, but that still seems it's super shitty. dangerous. It's shitty as hell. Don't it seems super dangerous. Well, it has it has a lid. You put you put the coal the the coal on the little tiny bowl, and then you put a lid over that, so it stuffs out your uh, your coal. I guess Plus, I'm just not it, willing to do it. It only accepts uh, quick lights, which ah. are really bad. Don't smoke quick lights. Get more point. Yeah, points. We gotta bring that back from the first episode. <laughs> anyway, on, on from all this stuff. On to what we're doing. Uh, as you can tell, we've got uh, our sponsors, White Squirrel, in front of me. Uh, I've got both their glass and their aluminum uh, growlers. The glass one is $25. The aluminum is $35. Uh, you pay that once, and then it costs $15 just to get them refilled. Uh, Which is a lot of alcohol. Yeah, uh, I, this is, what, 64 ounces or fluid? Yeah, 64 fluid ounces. Uh, the aluminum is the same, 64 fluid ounces. So, uh, but the, they're really nice to have. You can take them anywhere, really. Um, I like the aluminum. It keeps everything a lot colder, uh, a lot longer. Yeti needs to jump on this real quick. Like Yeti coasters. Oh, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't they? Or do, I have no they, idea. They have the cups? I'm pretty sure I saw them with a the growler. I have no idea. I'll have to, I'll have to <laughs> check that out um, in a little bit. 
Uh, so anyway, we thought it'd be fun if we tried a bunch of different drinks. Uh, we've got two guys in the lounge right now playing League of Legends. Uh, Josh from last episode, which is the owner of Cloud9, uh, he might hop in here and try some of the beer that we have. And uh, we've got... He's interested in this one, the uh, Habanero. The Habanero Nacho Bait from uh, uh, Country Boy Brewery. And then uh, we also have Brandon back there. He's a regular... Uh, he's also playing League with uh, Josh at the moment. Yep. Uh, so they might be hopping in and out, uh, trying these different alcohols, or they might just want a cup and then leave. So you know how League kind of gets, it gets pretty stressful. For the nerds out there, that's what they do. <laughs> but the first one we're going to try is uh, uh, Sweet Baby Jesus. Yeah, the first one we're going to try is called Sweet Baby Jesus. Let me try and find it. Um, who is it by? This, uh, I don't know how to, to Clavi? Oh, uh, Duclop. Duclop. No, there's no V. D U C L A. Oh, that's a W. Duclop. Duclop. Duclop I can't Brewery. Read. Um, I Chocolate peanut butter porter. I didn't look up to see where exactly they're from or whatnot, but uh, this brew was first brewed in 2011. Uh, it's a chocolate peanut butter porter. Uh, yeah, go ahead. For some odd reason today, it's been very cold here in Kentucky, so uh, all these have basically been sitting in the floorboard of my truck, and they feel like Slightly they came shaped. out of the uh, fridge and left on the counter for about 30 minutes. So, man, you don't know how to pour a beer. That's a lot ahead. I do. I'm just being lazy at this moment. <laughs> so, uh, I will say with the head, it's... Uh, Mine's not so bad. I think I just did yours wrong. You did mine wrong, then. See, look at mine. No, yours is perfect. Mine, yeah. You give me a lot of head. Um, don't ever want to say that if I'm alone at his house. It's beer. But We're it's talking about beer. They beer. Most of them know what head means on beer. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go. Let's just try it. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Ooh, that's nice. Dark. Wow. I okay. Like I like that a lot. Actually. So uh, this is again, it's a chocolate peanut butter pour. Uh, it's jet black in color, with a it says with a tan rocky head. Uh, with the head that he gave me in my beer, I could see the tan and the rockiness. Yep. Um, God, this is really good. This is a, this is gonna be our show. We're just gonna it, drink. Yeah, we're just gonna drink and talk and see what. Sorry happens. for the pauses because we're just gonna be drinking. So uh, it's a, a full body and creamy, which it, it, it really is creamy. It's, um, got, it's got a nice subtle bitterness to it. Yeah. But very smooth. Uh, it has a luxurious mouth feel, is what the uh, description says. <laughs> luxurious. Like yeah, I, I, I like it in there. I, I like any kind of beer in my mouth. I, I feel that's pretty luxurious. That's going to be our podcast, talking about head and mouth. <laughs> Just anything to do. Um, it says it's lightly sweet, multi flavor. I can see that. It, it's, it has that sweet sweet note when you first drink it. Absolutely. And then it goes down pretty smooth with a kind of a bitter, bitter back end. Oh, yeah. uh, or that malty, I guess. Yeah. Um, Not a bad thing. Accented with rich flavors of chocolate, coffee, peanut butter. I, I don't taste the coffee. I don't get much coffee off of it either. I don't. Mm, not much, no. I don't. Yeah, I don't see the coffee in it. No coffee for me, uh, but it is sweet. A um, little bit of peanut butter on the back end with that bitterness. Definitely, it, it, the uh, it's like eating a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Kind of. I, I kind of get the, the yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Like if you're eating a PB and J and you bite where that crust is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I definitely um, get that. So it's it's really. I think we should do the banana bread. I agree. Yeah, we'll do that one. Banana bread would be way good. So, uh, again, that's a, a Sweet Baby Jesus. It's a 6.2% alcohol by volume, uh, ABV. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, uh, again, the, the description that I have, I pulled off the Duclaw website itself. Uh, it's uh, Sweet Baby Jesus, finish it smooth, dry, and roasty with uh, lingering notes of chocolate and peanut butter, so savory. You will exclaim its name. Um, Sweet baby Jesus. Yeah. It's not bad. No, <laughs> it's, it, this is. I definitely get this again. Yeah. The uh, all these beers are. 
I kind of picked them up out of uh, Liquor Barn, which is just off of uh, Campbell Lane. And, uh, it's close to the Greenwood Mall. If everybody yeah, knows if, if anyone Mall knows how Bowling Green is set up. Um, I, I kind of picked these beers because I thought they were gimmicky. Uh, just kind of wanted to see how we react to them. Uh, everyone that I've talked to about them have, have had positive Oh, it's gassy. Have, 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 <laughs> has had positive notes, so uh, I'm looking forward to trying all these. Uh, did you already finish yours? No, have you? No, no, I'm not. No, I, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to like get the flavor. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, we're not really professionals when it comes to beer tasting. I'm probably one of the biggest beer fans that I know. We just like beer. Um, did, yeah. I mean, I, I prefer craft beer over like Budweiser or Miller. Um, I say Miller on purpose because I know you're a big Miller fan. If I go out to a bar or anything, I just it's <laughs> it's a good wholesome cheap beer. It, yeah, it's it's a lot better than PBR. Preferential, definitely like, better than uh, Bud Light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it better than uh, Bud Light is the main reason I get it. Um, I will drink a PBR, absolutely. You know, a lot of bars that I go to, you know, if they run out of Miller, I'll get a PBR. It's just a good. I don't want to say it is cheap, but flavor-wise, it's not so bad. If you go up to a bar, like a dive bar, which I don't really do, they're not going to have like a good craft beer there most of the time. I think. Uh, some of them do. If they do, it's, it's too uh, expensive for me because I'm cheap. Yeah, definitely. I'm cheap. Um, if if you go to like a dive bar, a lot of them will have like the specialty items, but they'll be like a, a eight dollar plus uh, range when you can get. Budweiser or something that the locals enjoy on tap for maybe three forty five or something like that. That's the big difference in White Squirrel though, is that every time I go to White Squirrel, I at least pay six dollars for a pint and I'm never disappointed. Right, their and their pints, I mean er, again, almost everything at White Squirrel is, is made in house, um, except for like the, the imports that they get from different breweries around. Um, I've gone there many times and seen different uh, uh, Brewmasters from Louisville, Nashville, just everywhere, meeting with Sean and uh, some of the other crew that work there, and just showing the love of craft beer and sharing sharing what they, the knowledge that they have. Just um, as much with the food as well. Like, yeah, definitely. Um, I think I don't even know how much of it. I think it all might actually be local stuff. I know they're the beef that they use for the burgers. I actually had I had a fried bologna, or it might have been smoked bologna sandwich. Yeah, today. smoked. And he was telling me that there was a guy that used to just set up shop across the street and smoke this giant thing of bologna. And just, <laughs> here you go. And it, so, it was um, awesome. The, I'm pretty sure the same place that White Squirrel gets their food, or their, their meats and stuff from, there's a butcher shop just down the road on 31 called the Faded, Fatted Cow, Faded yep. Cow or something. Fatted Calf. Fatted Calf. That's what it is, Fatted yeah. Calf. Uh, it's a really great butcher shop. He gets all of his stuff local. Uh, and he, he has some of the best bacon burger uh, uh, ground beef that I've, I've ever had to make burgers with. So I, I definitely recommend stopping there and get, picking up a pound of that or so. Oh yeah. Um, it, it makes some killer burgers. It's definitely um, one of the better local places. We didn't talk about what we're smoking. We didn't, no. Um, Probably need to hop on that. <laughs> Hop, I get it. Cause yeah. We, I get, uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I came up with this mix actually earlier today. I don't know if it's been done before or whatnot. Has, has this been done before? We haven't done it now. No? Okay, so. Uh, Maybe Josh has, but I haven't done it. Josh said it was a good mix. He, he, he smoked off mine and really enjoyed it. Um, so, what it is, is it's 50% uh, uh, Prince of Earl Grey, then 25% Melon Blend, and 25%. Uh, man Mandarin orange. That's it. Um, again, uh, Cloud Nine uses Tangiers, so it's all Tangiers flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it smell like to you? It's very. It's got earthy accents to it, but it also it, it comes off kind of tropical to me. That might just be me, but like it's got a sweet orange flavor in it. Melon blend alone, it's going to give you somewhat of that feel. So it comes off just slightly earthy. With a very tropical feel to it, it's a good smoke. Yeah, uh, I really, I really enjoy. It. Again, I just kind of rolled with it off the top of my head. Um, I enjoy earthy flavors, but sometimes I want that that fruit, and this seems to hit both uh, both uh, points 
for, for my likeness. Which we've been doing that a lot here lately, where we'll do something where it's very, it's got an earthy flavor to it, but it's also very sweet. We've been doing that a lot here lately. That's kind of been the, that's kind of been the famous here lately. <laughs> I have, I've noticed over the past. There Josh. Go, Josh, go! I've noticed over the past couple of weeks or the days with me being there. Oh, thank you for the view. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with the. Uh, I can't see anything, thank goodness. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Just ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> um, over the past couple of weeks and with me being here the past couple of days, I've noticed that uh, Shipwrecked mm. has seemed to be the biggest seller recently. Yeah, Shipwrecked has been pretty much our most popular mix here lately. Which that one is also very good. It has earthy tones to it, and also very sweet. What would you say about Shipwrecked? Uh, I would say that Shipwrecked is a nice balance between spicy and free and sweet. And that's why it's become a popular one. It's definitely one of my favorites. Everyone seems to be getting it here lately. Uh, what is the latest events? So on the Keep kicking the stupid table. Right. On the uh, on the 26th of this month, with uh, which is next Saturday, you want to shut that door? Absolutely. Uh, on the 26th, which is next Saturday, uh, Cloud9 is going to be host hosting a speakeasy. Uh, come dress down to your 20s. To the nines. A 1920s themed event. Yeah. Um, if you best woman and man dressed, uh, I think you guys are doing a hookah package. Uh, giveaway. Something like that. I, I think that's what I heard. Well, I it might be Cloud9 Cash, who knows? Yeah. Like 20 bucks um, Cloud9 Cash, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I just work here. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's also, it's going to be a lock-in, correct? Or no, is it, is no. it just? It just starts at 9 o'clock. I think it ends at either 11 or midnight, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. A lot of uh, like electro swings going to be playing. Uh, probably going to hand out some like sparkling apple cider in a glass or something, trying to be fancy as we can be. Hold that pinky high. Yeah, hold that pinky high. <laughs> this was a great beer. Oh yeah, I've already finished it. <clears throat> it was good. This is a, it was, this was a great start for how we're doing it, even though it's kind of backwards. Yeah, well I mean, <clears throat> you said it yourself, we don't need to start with anything that's like an IPA. Oh definitely, that, that just it kills your taste buds instantly. Um, probably, sh probably should have started with a port, but... Okay, I'm going to grab know. us some water so we can kind of clear yeah, our palate. Yeah, clean our palates. Um, what else we got? we got? Oh, we have the ice cream also. Yeah, why don't you uh, toss out that ice cream? Should we go ahead and open up the ice cream next? Or? We'll hold off, we'll hold off. Oh, we some ice cream? Alright. Oh, we got so many choices. Oh, man. We got a lot to go through. Today. We do. We've, oh, thank you. We've, uh, I don't know, it's, the last three weeks, a lot has, a lot has happened and been going on. Um, what's been in the news? Beats me. <laughs> Beats you. Um, only thing I've for, ever seen is on Facebook with the election. That's about it. That's true. But nobody wants to talk about politics. Unless you're Josh. He brought that up last show. Unless you're Josh. Um, what's in the new, uh, for the gamers out there, uh, GDC was this past week. Uh, a lot of people might might not have seen or might have noticed or I don't know. Um, Are you talking about the multi-platform play? Yeah, Xbox is, is uh, trying to get the multi-console uh, servers together uh, so Xbox can play along with PS4 and with uh, PC. Uh, kind of broaden up and open up the <laughs> open up the lobbies so uh, uh, there's more players together since I'm pretty sure because Xbox is losing uh, this console war that uh, that's their way of trying to get back into it. Which I mean it makes sense. I mean who, let's say you buy a PS4 but your buddy always buys an Xbox. I mean of course you're going to want to play together. I mean it's the smart thing to do. Right. Um, I mean I, I've got both right now. Uh, I mean, you're buying my PS4. He's been kind enough to let me borrow his PS4, so and I've I got have something. I've got the Xbox at home that I've just I've been loving since since I got it. I've been loving your PlayStation. I bet. I kind of I, I, I kinda, give it sweet love. I kind of miss my PlayStation. I love it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, PlayStation VR was announced with the price. Uh, uh, it's going to be coming out 
uh, I think they said sometime in October was the uh, was the the month that they gave us. I don't I don't remember exactly. That's gonna be the next big thing though. Just um, VR constantly just coming out. Oh, that's that's gonna be a big problem though. I feel like because there's gonna be so many different things coming out of VR that it's just gonna be a big mess where. Right. There's just so many different things that only work with one thing. You've got the Oculus, the HTC Vive, and then now the PlayStation VR. And there's a lot of like indie companies Mi working on it as well. Microsoft has their HoloLens, but we don't know when that's coming out or whatnot. Samsung VR. Well, that's, that's, that's the HTC oh. uh, Vive, I believe. No, no, I'm sorry. No, you're right. Samsung Gear. That's that's right. Yeah, they, were, they, they announced it with the, what was it? The, the S7. S7. Yeah. yeah, the new Galaxy S7 phone. Um, I think a lot of like Best Buy. If you if you pre-order the S7, you'll get the buy or the whatever the Samsung Gear for free or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you pre-order it. You yeah. Um, the uh, it's gonna be a gimmick for a long time until it gets some salt. Definitely, I've I've watched a lot of a lot of reviews and everything, and just a lot of the gameplay that I've seen, it doesn't look stable or it's stable but it's not to the graphics that we're used to on uh, current systems right the only thing um, i've really seen that gets me somewhat excited is actually the uh, i think it was the microsoft like hololens i think is what it's called yeah that's the coolest thing i've seen by far as far as some sort of vr goes right just because you know it's not an actual screen it's like 3d images that are there with you instead of just being a straight screen. Right. But there's gonna be so many different things that come it, out. It'll be in interesting. Um, I kind of laugh about the Hololens because if you watch Jurassic Park, the the one that came, the first Jurassic Park movie, there's that scene where they're taking the tour through or on the uh, they're they're buckled down into the chair and they're it's going through the different Mr. DNA is telling you about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows it shows a scientist or a geneticist. My my bad. He's got a, a lens on and he's holding glo a gloves and he's going on like this. But in the lens, you can see the the DNA strand is moving. That's basically what they're doing. This is exactly what they're doing. Um, it it cracks me up to see that. And then now we're we're catching up to it. So Jurassic Park is ahead of its time, and it it, it still stands up to this day uh, when you watch movies or what. Or, uh, old movies just with the just they didn't use much cgi they used the uh, uh, practical effects it really it still stands up so john carpenter is one of my favorite uh, directors because he did use a lot of actual practical effects instead of you know like cgi or anything if you ever watched the movie uh the thing mm -hmm. the i think it was like the 1986 version the original or, or <clears throat> not the Original, original, not the black and white, the the, the technically the, the second one, the reboot in 1986 yeah. with Kurt Russell. It was one of my favorite actors of all time. Um, I liked him because he was in Stargate. Yeah, he was in the movie Stargate. Yeah, he was also Snake Plissken in Escape from New yeah. York, LA. Yeah. But besides the fact, practical effects are way better than CGI, I would say. But you know, it's, that's a whole other topic. So. Uh, where were we at? Oh, the PlayStation VR again. It's it was released with a with a four hundred dollar price tag, which is two hundred dollars cheaper than the uh, 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 Oculus, and I think yeah, because the Oculus is like six hundred. Yeah, um, and then something else. I think the Vive was eight hundred or something. Like, oh, what? I'll just clear my, <laughs> clear my cup I out. Think, <laughs> I think the Vive was eight hundred. So um, again, place in. Uh, it requires you to have a camera, which the camera is sixty dollars. So there's four hundred and sixty dollars that you're spending, and then uh, you can use the PlayStation remote for a little bit, but eventually it will ask for uh, the PlayStation Move one, which I think those are 30, 30 or forty dollars. Something like that. This was just set out forever. But the way with uh, companies are, something comes back in stock or in style or something, they're going to raise the price. So it'll probably be another sixty dollar remote. So. We'll see. We'll see what Sony does. We'll uh, hopefully they don't overcharge us. Uh, let's go ahead and start the next one. The next one. Let's go ahead. And we gotta say goodbye to Sweet Baby Jesus. Yes. Goodbye, Sweet Baby Jesus. Where are we going? We're going to the west. We are going to the banana bread beer. 
Lead point two ounces, five point two alcohol by volume. I can't read. Wells, oh, there it is. Wells Brewers. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's a Charles Wells Brewing Company. I believe they're out of the UK. I, I don't quite remember. So this is the uh, banana bread beer. Uh, it's. I don't know if maybe it was a typo. I took this off of their website. It's a tempting Bena, B A N O F F E E, Bena Fee, like a banana coffee esque, I guess is what they were going for. Aromas, uh, it's tempered by a grassy, lemony nose, uh, it, all Smells. leading to a finely balanced, fresh, Delicate flavor of peppery hops with a lingering dry finish. Smells delicious. A lot better pour too. I worked on it. So, I I get the lemony the lemony. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get the the lemony. I don't, I don't get grassy. The taste though. Yeah. It tastes like banana bread. <laughs> it's just straight up. It really does. Yeah, that's that's the only that's thing I can say bread. about it. It's there's, just banana. Bread. There's no alcohol at all in this. No, it's just banana bread. It's just banana bread. <laughs> what's what's the percentage on this thing? Five point two. Oh, that's not bad. Well, the other one was six. It's pretty. It's pretty normal. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a what Budweiser. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, I actually think Budweiser's like. Well, no, Budweiser's straight. I think that is about the same amount. Yeah, platinum six. So. Yeah, this is this is banana bread. It's it's just banana. Bread. Yeah. We're just drinking banana bread. I do like the color of it. I do too. It's a tan, uh, almost, almost like tea. a yeah. I was getting ready to say almost like a tea color. Um, that the last drink we had, we should have gone over this. <clears throat> it was very dark. What what hookah would you have paired it with? Ooh. With the last one, straight up, I would have done cocoa and horchata. Yeah. Yeah, it's a certain Definitely. cocoa That's, and horchata. Give it like a almost cinnamony, chocolatey type mix to smoke with that. That would be good. Mm -hmm. um, for this one, I would pair this with a. I'd probably go Welsh cream. Okay. Um, just get, to get, add more of that creaminess and might, might give it more of like a. I'd throw um, in some apple as well. I can see that, yeah, an apple. Um, give it more of like a, a baked. Sort of feeling, yeah. uh, more than it does now. That's about all I got. I don't know what else we could put. I, I wouldn't either. No. Um, Definitely, I would put some apple on it for sure. Yeah. So again, I apologize for the the pauses that we may have. Drinking really good beer, smoking really good hookah. Yeah. Um, Feel free to drink along at home. Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Uh, or make take notes and then drink this later and watch it again. Yeah, which I'm sure Nick over here, will, over here will put a list of the beers that we're drinking in the description. Yeah, I've, I've got everything that I'll, I'll throw in there. And in the description, so while you're watching this, you can just drink them with us. And for one person to drink all this, you're going to get blasted, but still, it'll be fun. Well, see, <laughs> I've noticed in the past couple of videos, you can easily make a drinking game out of myself. Uh, every time that I say, um... Every time we point to the camera. Take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every time, I've noticed I get itchy, and I, 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 it's more of a nervous tick of when I'm on camera that I start itching myself or scratching somewhere. I think it's itchy. So yeah, uh, so definitely that could be a, a fun drinking game. You get drunk pretty quick. I scratch myself a lot. It's like you're wearing a hole. I guess. Over we pause. Every, <laughs> every time it's just an awkward pause. Let's go ahead and take a sip. Um, God, this is. Did you already finish yours? No. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still. I'm, I'm, I'm like sitting down and sound empty. No. That's the cup. I'm just sitting. <laughs> so. But it's straight up drink. We're drinking banana bread. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've got twelve drinks to go through. And we have um, ice, cream. ice cream, which we'll talk about that later. Yes. As to why it's good. Yes. Uh, but I really don't have anything else to say about this. It's just, it's got a good color. Um, 
as far as the head went on it, it was not the best, I would say. But flavor overall is very good. You, you poured this well enough that there wasn't really much of a head at all. So it's it was kind of a tannish white head. Um, I mean, well, it just it didn't. There you go. Ooh, it's gassy. I had to get that out. I did. <laughs> That well, was that yeah. was a pleasant release as well. It still tastes like banana bread. How about every time we do something awkward, you take a drink? <laughs> I'll just make this a fun time. Yeah. Oh, um, I don't know what. Uh, what else can we talk about? What's is there anything new going on in the hookah world that you that I don't know about? Or well, we are going to be bringing some new shisha. Right. Here. That's why we have a sale on Social Smoke over there. Um, we're bringing Alchemist which is supposed to be a rival of Tangiers. Mm -hmm. As far as like the thickness of the smoke as well as flavor and nicotine content, it's supposed to be a good rival with Tangiers. So we're going to start selling it here in the lounge as well. I don't know much about it. Um, Josh could go on all day probably. I'm really looking forward to Alchemist. I've been following them for quite some time. Uh, I've been trying to get my hands on some, but it's every time I try to, it's been sold out. Um, they have two different uh, styles of uh, tobacco. Some of it's barrel bourbon aged. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. See, um, I don't know much about it. I haven't done my research. Oh, come on, man. Uh, so, I just work here. <laughs> so, <laughs> one line is uh, barrel bourbon aged, and yet the other line is not. Um, so, the other line, the bourbon barrel aged line is more stout. Uh, it's a, a thicker tobacco. Uh, hit to the face when you smoke it. Um, Would you say it compares to ten years? I, I mean, I haven't had it, so I. Oh I yeah, that's it. right. It's been sold out. Yeah. Um, all the this is the description. Yeah, all the all the reviews that I've seen on it, it's it's been very. Uh, what up? <laughs> all the reviews I've seen on it have been very positive. Uh, Josh, with you with you coming through. How do you feel about Alchemist? What's what's your yeah? Take that's on what I'm talking about right now. Is Alchemist. Alchemist tobacco. <laughs> I put it over there. Alchemist tobacco. Heard mostly positive things. That's what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. And he was telling me some of it's aged in a bourbon barrel, which I haven't done my research on it. I don't know much I'm about it. I'm not mistaken, both lines are. The difference are is... Are they both? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not, I believe so. I think that the difference between the lines is um, the uh, dark tobacco versus the lighter leaf. Um, but... Oh, you're already finished. I, you want to try this? I don't get my expectations too high for it. What is it? The banana bread? It's banana bread. Oh, no, I've already had that. It's okay. very good. Never mind. I don't steal your beer. Um, but I'm super, super excited to have a new brand on the shelf that I think uh, will appeal to a lot of new people. It's good to see a company, um, once again, from San Diego doing some really unique things um, and trying to kind of break the traditions by branching out and Americanizing it, you know, using bourbon barrels to age the tobacco. Um, I think it's pretty genius. So, anything. Aged and bourbon girl, it's a mall though. Of course. Yeah. You want to try the habanero? Sure, I would love to. You want to get a cup? Yes. You want to try the habanero? He is not twenty. He is not twenty-one. Oh, never mind. Sorry, bud. Don't be serving the miners. Can't. <laughs> you're on camera. All right, so we are just going. I didn't know you were not twenty-one. My bad. We're gonna get rid of the banana bread beer. I've been excited about this for a long time. Move on to the nacho bait, which I've tried before. I've had this many times. Many, I've, tried it, I've tried it once. Many a time. You just discovered it last month. Yeah, I've had it many times since last month. <laughs> so, uh, Josh and I on our last last time uh, episode, we were talking about different beers. And uh, I had brought up that White Squirrel has a jalapeno colch uh, that I really enjoy. And he brought up that he would like to have something kind of spicy, more like a habanero. I found this uh, the next day. Yeah, literally, literally the, the next, next day. day I found this. Uh, it's at Liquor Barn. Uh, it's from Country Boy Brewery. I believe they're in Louisville. No, uh, Lexington. Lexington. It's one of the L's. Um, where do I have this from here? 
think it's actually, um, yeah, they're, they're a brewery. Yep, it's it's pretty close to downtown. I got to pass by it. So, uh, no idea what the alcohol content this is. This one's 4.9%. Okay, so a little bit less. A little bit less. Uh, Not a huge difference, though. And plus, it gives you more. It's in a bigger bottle. Yeah. Um, the pour is a pale golden color. Uh, settles into a hazy gold yellow. Oh, yeah. Uh, small white bubbly oh, head. Yeah. yeah. That's spicy. Uh, <laughs> then it subdues into a thin cap, which mine already has. The... Uh, the smell of the spicy habanero pepper, uh, backed by some hops, grassy wheat, and some light citrus fruits. So, are you smelling that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I was trying to smell it. I don't smell much of anything. Yeah, I just smell the habanero. The, the habanero. It, it comes off very spicy, but it's good. I like it a lot, actually. The, uh, the taste is, is it's uh, grassy wheat up front, some citrus. Like a, a lemon or, or a lime, uh, but soon that the hot the pepper comes in, Whoops. and uh, then it starts to be sweet, but heats up on the end. So uh, I like it just because it makes the tongue tingle. Yeah, that's a very accurate description of spicy. Sometimes I don't get the descriptions that beers are trying to put out as far as uh, what they're going for. Everything that I've had from Country Boy has been. Absolutely on point. Um, I think they put out a vanilla porter that blows Breckenridge away, and I don't know why uh, more places around here don't carry that. Have you had it before? I have not. The Shotgun Wedding is what it's called. It's phenomenal. You can taste the Madagascar vanilla bean in it. Um, with this, um, it's also phenomenal. The habanero is right there, it's prominent, and the heat is there get the flavor, but it's not overwhelming you by any means. It's completely enjoyable. The only thing I find interesting is I can't differentiate between how hoppy this is and the tingle of the pepper because, you know, with hoppiness, you're getting that bitterness, you're getting kind of this, um, I don't know how else to describe it, but kind of tingle in my throat, I guess. It goes down smooth, but at the back of your throat, you can feel it. Like the spiciness and that tingle. Yeah, but I like I could easily work through a pint of this and not feel like I was going to have massive heartburn the next day. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, we went over the last two, which was the uh, baby sweet baby Jesus, which was the chocolate peanut butter stout, mm -hmm. and then the, the Wells banana bread. Did you try it? Yeah. Oh, you've already been through it. Yeah. The whole thing. You yeah. already drank it. You already drank it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm pouring, so I just put a half. So how much? How much? The, the sweet baby Jesus, I mean, it tastes like you, uh, when you go to eat a peanut butter sandwich okay. and you get part of the crust from the, the bread in it. Okay. That's pretty much what it tastes That's like. That's what it tastes like. Oh, okay. Um, it says it's supposed to have like coffee notes in it, but I, I, couldn't, really, taste coffee. I couldn't really bring that out. Might just be me. Then, uh, then the banana bread, it tastes just like banana bread. It, you exactly can taste like banana bread. Oh, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that was banana bread too. It's an occasional for me, but if I feel a mood for something like that, I don't hesitate to pick that one up. So if you were drinking and smoking at home, what would you compare the, or what would you, uh, pair. what would you pair with? Yeah. This, the yeah. social smoke mango habanero, hands down. It'd be perfect for that, or any kind of mango, because mango and habanero right. do go well together. Um, I that think would be good. Uh, what I would not do is smoke horchata while drinking. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, this, this is not a horchata. Yeah, horchata means really not. That's a little too much heat. Stay away from anything sweet. <laughs> pair it with something sweet, fruity, to help complement the spice. That's what I would do. So we have, I found out I have another spicy habanero or a, a porter in there. Do you want to try that? Or is that going to be killing your diet? Or what's it uh, called? Uh, it's somewhere in there. Which on the list? It's the, uh, that one. No, no, no. The one with the passion fruit. No, it's no. And the anno oh. It's on the far right. Front, front of you, front of you. Nope. This one? Nope. Where am I going? Far right. This one? Nope, left left. I got this one. Yep. Ah, found it. 
another Jesus beer? I guess. <laughs> another Jesus beer? I guess so. Jesus is popular in the brewing world. This one's Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Cinnamon, uh, cocoa, chili pepper, and coffee. That one's gonna be good. What's the name on that one? Give that pronunciation. On mas todo with Jesus. Killed it. Got it. I believe it. Uh, Imperial Stout, burned with cinnamon, cocoa nibs, chili peppers, and coffee beans. That's all of the only information I got. Yes. Uh, Barcelona, Spain. It comes from España. Well, that sounds interesting. This kind of reminds me of, uh, just the description, it reminds me of, uh, there's a uh, candy bar, chocolate bar maker, artisan chocolate, and Nashville, I believe is where they're based. It's called Rogel. B-O-E-G-L-E, and um, they have a Moe's dark uh, bacon, dark chocolate bacon candy bar, which is awesome. Uh, but they have another one that's basically a dark chocolate with chili pepper. And, um, I think one of them is called Firecracker. It's chili pepper pop rocks <laughs> and chocolate. <laughs> Nice. So it's 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 crazy, but it's really neat. So that kind of reminds me. Of, the, the description reminds me a lot of that. Did you pull no, okay. no, there's there's a lot of that one. Cool. I'd be willing to try that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you want to pop it open? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'll pop it open. This is what you do when you're married. Cool. <laughs> Get the titanium ring. That's right. Tungsten carbide. Ooh, this one's very dark. So again, it's it's a pour. That one's very good. And uh, I didn't really get any other information on it other than being. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's an imperial stout. I'm, I'm not done with my habanero yet. How's your leak though? Oh really? Oh, so this is just me trying. Ah, oh, well, no, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, leak is going well. Leak just got done messing around. Up. I think we'll play some real games here. Yeah, the spice on that is incredible. On the habanero? Yeah. And it lingers. You know? It lingers for quite some time. Very much so. They nailed it. Alright. Mm. I definitely... I can smell the chocolate and the coffee. Coffee is very that, strong that there. That cinnamon is there. Yeah. Um, it's, it reminds me of like a Mexican hot chocolate. You get like a... Um, Babolita or, or me Babolita that has like the <laughs> circles that you have you seen those yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Um, those are those are my favorite when it comes to Mexican chocolate. That smells really good. Mm. Right when it hits the lip, strong chocolate. Mm -hmm. Really strong chocolate. That's amazing. You get that tingle on the tongue. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is Mexican hot sure. chocolate all over. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like I really, really do. <laughs> and it's so thick and rich. It reminds me of kind of like the richness of so that you turn away. Yeah, yeah. But not it's as not sweet. As sweet. Yeah. yeah. That, so that, that was the thing that got me about that creme brulee. It's just it was so sweet. This is a dessert. This is something on occasion mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, this is not. This would not be a. This buy a six pack and hang out for a couple of hours. This is an after dinner. Treat. Wow. Oh yeah. Or <laughs> wake up at in the morning treat. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it didn't oh. wake you up. Oh. Oh wow. Is that a bad? Oh. No. It's. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> For me, I'm not. It's. It's very dark. <laughs> Yeah. Because I can't, I can't, I can't, like, 
I just, I just bore a whole lot. I just, yeah. No, I know. Like sample size has been, but has some rich stuff. Oh yeah. But that's what you guys got on the, I think I've tried most of everything else as well. These were the top two that I wanted to try. Um, I think this, got, one, this one's the one I've read. That's the, the, so this is an IPA. It's a... Tropical and Tropical. Something like that. Spices and passion fruit. Yeah, that's a tropical and tart. You know the tropical on the can looks like... Um, uh, tropical Punch, yes. Hawaiian yeah. Tropical yeah. Punch. Yeah, we're about to drink Hawaiian Punch beer. <laughs> That's what that Where is. Where do I have that one on here? Ooh, that is so rich. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a one and done kind of. Yeah. There it is. Avery Brewing Company. From the tropical one. Yeah. Um, I didn't get where exactly it's from. Which that's this one. We'll get on that later. Yeah, Avery Brewing Company. We'll get on that one later. But this one for sure. Like, oh, that was a close call. Yeah, this one's twelve percent alcohol by the way. Uh, you can tell immediately when drinking it because it's so rich and thick, and it just. But huge, it was huge difference. It was another one that you couldn't taste the alcohol. No, um, you well, certainly unlike, can't. Unlike uh, what's again? Oh, you're good. But you certainly can't taste the alcohol. But it's just super rich and it's really strong. It's a very strong beer. Very distinct flavor. It's extremely bitter, but it's not a bad bitter whatsoever. What a, What would you pair this with? Which one? The 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 one we, we just had. Uh, the one we just had. You know, honestly, what I would pair that with because when I think when when you're talking about rich flavors, there's nothing that you can pair it with that's going to make it any lighter. Right. So I would go on full decadent. I would maybe pack some cocoa, mm -hmm. some raspberry, Ooh, yes. something with that. I, I would keep with the the uh, the flavor accents from that. Yeah, definitely do the cocoa. I'd... Also, if you heard, that was a time to drink. He said, "On." Uh, um. <laughs> oh, is that it? Yeah, we're oh, gosh. we're explaining the, <laughs> we're explaining the drinking games that that I've noticed over the past couple of episodes that we can do. Okay, basically um, inviting people to drink these same alcohols with us as we do them. That's hilarious. And anytime we do something like say um, um it's usually when I uh, say um <laughs> or um, to, you know, I what? say it the most. I think if both of us <laughs> do it though, they'll have a lot of fun with this. If both of us say it, chug it. Oh god, no. Please don't. <laughs> Especially if you're doing the same that's, ones that we are that's, on this one. That's don't a, do it. That's a way to get alcohol poisoning. <laughs> it was yeah, one person with all this. It's a way to waste great beer. That is yes. well. Yes. That is well. Yeah. If you're doing this, drink PBR. Or <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that one's oh. very, very dark. I feel like it's... For me, I say it's bitter, but it's more of like a salty almost flavor to it. Really? I get that out of it. I don't. We're still talking about this one, right? Yes. yes. It's sweet, but it's almost like a salty bitterness. Huh. That's what I got. Like a salted caramel. That might make a great beer. I said I say that I, now, and then tomorrow you're gonna. I actually, um, <laughs> Wells makes a salted caramel no toffee, way. and it's so not good. Oh, it's not. It's I not good. I actually had that the first time we were gonna do this, uh, what two weeks ago, but because we couldn't get everyone together, I took it home and I drank it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good one. For you. That's the way it is. It's not a good one. Well, that would be good. So far, we've had a pretty positive review on it. It would have been ha it would have been great for you to pick up a disgusting beer that. Nobody See, that's wanted. what I tried to do. Uh, I mean, I, I I asked the guy I talked to, uh, give me your most gimmicky beers, and I'll, I'm gonna try. Them. And okay. he's like, all right, okay. we got these, these, and these. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna take them all. There's bound to be one here though that I don't like. Um, There's bound to be. Um, this was what he gave you out of the gimmicky beers. Yeah. Oh gosh. Huh. He did, he, did he? Did you pick that up separately, or did he recommend the Which Country one? Boy? The, I did the Country Boy separately. Okay. That, right. that one I wanted everyone to try. Yeah. Really, I got it because I wanted to see Taylor's reaction to it. Oh, 
in the world could Dragon's Milk Stout be a gimmicky beer? Uh, he just big flavors. Have you had that before? No, I haven't had that before. Yeah, I've, it doesn't really have a description. I have no idea what this is. I've, I've got it. Roast sea malt character intermingled with deep vanilla tones while dancing in oak bath. Alright. Oak bath. Yeah. Red meat, smoked foods, balsamic, rich cheese, and dark chocolate are the pairings. So, I'll probably like this one as well. It looks like a very dark beer as well. So, if we're smoking, will that pair with the two then? Since we're not smoking meats, but. Probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not smoking meats? That's good. I no. feel a little bit more comfortable around you now. If we got some bacon. <laughs> Hayden, do you smoke meats? No. Good. We were already talking earlier I, about I how... I do on my grill. We were all talking earlier about how... Uh, really? Yeah. He was telling me that uh, whenever I poured his first beer... What? He was talking about how... Uh, I don't need the location of your indiscrepancies. He was telling me how I hadn't given him a good head on his beer. No, you, you poured me too much head on my beer. See, I gave him too much. Too much head? Yeah. yeah. That's like the way you enjoy smoking meats, so. On my grill. <laughs> I, again, don't need to know the location. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not smoking them with my mouth. <laughs> but you know, how else do you smoke? Never mind. There you you enjoy it with your mouth, though. What do you mean, how else do you smoke meats? Nick? This is education time. Smoking meat is a euphemism. I'm not. For I'm giving a blowjob. I know what you're getting. This to. is time to drink. <laughs> Just drink away right now. I know what you're getting to. <laughs> All right. But, um, that's not what I'm doing. Oh, okay, okay. That's good. I'm glad. See, some clarification. We're getting somewhere. We're learning a lot about Nick. <laughs> Stay away from this grill. <laughs> oh. Oh, goodness. Okay, are we done with these two for the moment? Uh, sure. And I'm just gonna put them over here to the side. Those are unfinished ones. What should we move on? What should we move on to? Uh, close your eyes, a big one. All right, let's see where I go. Wait, what did you do with the passion fruit? That's the one you want to try. All right. You want to try that? I was, I was about to go to it with my eyes closed to be where it was. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and dive in. Ooh. Is it red? Nope. It, it, it looks like we're about to drink some uh, chocolate punch. Oh, my God. Oh, does it really? It's a very, very neon green, almost. Neon green. Like a uh, ecto, ecto, ecto juice. Well, yeah, whatever that was called. High seas, uh, Ghostbusters. Yes, exactly. That's not what this looks like. It's, <laughs> it's very, very light. Ooh, that passion fruit is strong. Yes, it is. It's kind of repulsing at first. Yes. That kind of smells. Oh my goodness, that is sweet. I just tasted it. That's very sweet. So this is on the opposite end of that one. One hundred percent opposite end, yeah. Of the one from Spain. It smells terrible. <laughs> we might have found one. Don't want to drink this. We might have found one. It's very juice like. It, it's not like it's refreshing. refreshing. If you want to have an alcoholic high C, this is it. This is actually very refreshing. It's not bad. Mm. Oh wow! But even on the inhale, even when I inhale, I'm still getting that pungent. Hundreds. I could drink this on a hot day. Yeah, I could. This is a summer. A very summer sweet. Drink. Yeah. Very fruity. It's good. This is very fruit punchish. Yeah. This is not up my alley. Not up your alley? alley. I enjoy this. It, it's pleasant. It's enjoyable. But this is not something I personally would get because um, I. it's a light beer. Yes. Um, yeah. And it has virtually no bitterness, which is usually what I like, but I like some sort of balance, and this one is a little too light and a little too sweet. It's me. extremely on the opposite end of the spectrum. So this one is available year-round. Uh, it's a Belgian-style white ale with passion fruit, and it's 5.4% uh, alcohol by volume. Uh, 
It says that adding a tropical island flair to a spicy traditional wheat beer, whip beer, Lily Koi erupts with uh, monumental passion fruit aroma and acidity along with a sublimely succulent finish. Well, I don't know about succulent, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. It's light enough I can finish it. Like it's not cloyingly sweet um, like the last one was. But it is too fruity. I, I, I do like it though. I would definitely get this again. You and Hayden are definitely on uh, a different uh, different level with this one. Um, do you ever um, do you ever try that lemon grass wheat beer? The like the lemon one that came in the can, had a lemon on the front. I don't think so. Um, that one is an American from an American brewery. I'm just not sure where. <laughs> I just want to show really quickly where we were and where we just went. <laughs> There's that one, which looks like black tar mess. And then we have this one. You should probably bring it close up to the camera. Oh, I will. No. <laughs> where we were and where we just went. Well, this, this is ridiculous. The, the lemongrass wheat, it has... It's so the one on your left hand is the Aeon Mas Toro Jesus. My left hand, yeah. This one is the dark one that we just had that has the chili pepper in it and everything. This is the one that we just went to. Huge difference in alcohol. It's ridiculous. It's got the lemongrass wheat has the lemon profile, but it's also kind of got this really grassy taste that uh, uh, balances out the sweetness of the lemon, and then it has a lot more hops. I think used in the process, uh, giving it kind of a little bit of a bite to it. And I could enjoy. It's not my favorite beer, but I could enjoy that on a hot summer's day because I felt like it's balanced, and that would literally almost be like having a wine cooler for me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, wine I, coolers are good, <laughs> but... Uh, I find that they're way too sweet. I can't enjoy them really? as much. Yeah. Uh, with things like that, like with the... Uh, I was thinking for a wine cooler kind of guy. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I do like ciders on occasion, but they end up just that's, being way too uh, sweet. That's been my favorite thing so far. Like woodchucks? Yeah, I'll go to OT's and I've got woodchuck on draft, so I, I get, usually get that. You can't drink more than one though, because they're just way too sweet. Oh, I, I usually drink three. Uh, yeah, right? No, I, I, I actually love ciders. It wasn't five, ten years ago you couldn't find a good cider. I mean, they had, you know, Strongbow, they had imports from England for cider, but as far as like American culture went. Now, my, right out, one of my favorites is Ace Pear Cider. That tastes like Starburst in your mouth. It's really oh my awesome. goodness. Yeah. Uh, you might like that. If you can find it, get it, because that's very good. I'll see if I can find it. My, uh, my sister turned me on to ciders. Uh, again, in Virginia, there's a, a Gold Rock Cidery uh, that I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting back over there into. Uh, I'll have to bring some for Josh and see what he thinks about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I really liked it. I do too. I like. I like it. Let's, go, let's go ahead and finish it. Just because yeah, Matt, I'm waiting on Matt. Let's go ahead and Yeah, I love the table. I don't want my balls to go to waste. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and pour the rest of this one because it's real good. Do you want more, Josh? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More for me. More for you. That's exactly right. But yeah, the, the, the first aroma of it is uh, it's very strong with that passion fruit and the acidity. Very much so, but I could drink this on a hot day and really enjoy it. Mm. Whereas with that one, give me that on a hot day and I will be puking real quick. Cold day, cold day. Yeah, that's that's definitely good for what was today. Yeah. If we were, if we had spent the day outside, that would be the perfect one. Yes. Um, how's the, is the ice cream still cold or what's, what's going on with that? Slightly cold. Slightly cold. Slightly. Oh, I just put this. No, I probably should do it back in the freezer. Wait, why? Huh? It's ice cream. Cherry chart? No. No. We're about to. Look We've been waiting, but we, we might as well do it since it's melting. Yeah, I um, I have more spoons. I I I brought some spoons last Sunday. They're sitting down in the first drawer. Oh, cool. This is wine ice cream, by the way. First, uh, top, on your right. On your right. On your right. 
you sat in the first drawer and there's six drawers. Well, then why'd you open up the third one on the bottom? <laughs> I assumed that some of the part of my silverware on the bottom shelf. But this is uh, wine ice cream. I've had this before, and it is amazing. So, Josh, I'll let you get the first uh, spoon. Yep, you guys have two kinds. You serve me up all sorts of goodies. Slightly melted. That's Slightly, okay, though. but it's on you. So this is wine ice cream. It, I didn't get a thing for it. It tastes like cherry really dressing. That's really good, right? It's all right. I, I didn't get it on the first bite. So I'm, not, I, I'm not on a diet this week. This week is a uh, is stress eating week. <laughs> to me, it tastes like Cherry Garcia from Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and too. And then that it has that subtle wine uh, on the back end. On the back end, that's right. Yeah. Right up front, and mm. sweet, cherryish. Um, it's my favorite. Goodness, and then definitely the wine comes out in the back. So this is the Cherry Merlot. Uh, the company is called Mirrors. M-E-R-E-E-R-S. Again, it's, it's uh, out of Kentucky, or out of uh, New York. Um, you can pick it up in Bowling Green Liquor Barn. That's where I got all these today. Is now, does it actually have an alcohol content to it? Uh, I haven't been able to find one. Um, it has to be 21 back. Yes. It is alcohol. Then it probably does have alcohol in it. But as far as ice cream goes, it's one of my favorites for sure. We had that other one. Uh, you and I let me take it home last mm -hmm. week. What was that one? Um, the one I let you take home was the Riesling. Riesling, yeah. So it's sweet. It was, I didn't like that one as much though. It was a vanilla bean, uh, sweet uh, wine, which is what I get from uh, Riesling. Yeah, I'm, I'm still very new to wine. I've been trying to branch out a little bit, but I'm still very new to it. Um, so this reminds me of, like, you know, um, obviously, desserts that corporate alcohol mm -hmm. I brought back from Germany for you. Yep. The, oh, lucky. Um, oh, it was the <laughs> brandy. Brandy filled, Asbachirot. Actually, they taught me how to correctly pronounce it, my German friends, when I was over there. <laughs> Seriously. I, I practice it like I'm it. Dead. I believe it. And they laugh at me every time. Um, but um, right. it's brandy filled chocolates that are just incredible. And what I want to do is see if they can't ship me some more. They were delicious. And, uh, and we can try them here one night. My sister was stationed at Wiesbaden in Germany. And she always shipped us uh, the, the chocolate filled hippos. Did you, ever, did you no. see those out there? <laughs> They're, uh, uh, they're little chocolate filled hippos. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of them or anything. She'll probably leave another comment that she did on one of our other videos. Hippo chocolate? <laughs> well, I'm trying to be really clever here. Hippo choc. Hippo chocotomus. Hippo chocotomus. There's similar styles of it here in the States, but it's it doesn't taste. The same. Well, that was the great thing about the German chocolate that he actually gave me. It had, <laughs> it had, it had yes. very many um, different styles of it. Well, some so coffee. So I gave you like the variety pack of it all. It I amazing. actually didn't get one for myself, so I don't know what he got to try. Um, there's like four different styles of chocolate in his in his package. Um, I just got like the uh, I just got four packs of like the praline. With the the, the, the uh, bean shaped ones, yeah. Um, but I really want to get that pack to be able to sample them all. And, and, and you know, of course, there's plenty of each kind in the pack, so if we get a pack, it's definitely we'll a variety pack. Right? It was great. And the, one of my favorite things about it is that the brandy wasn't really infused with the chocolate. You could bite off the top of it, and it's just literally just brandy right there on the inside. You can just drink it right. <laughs> I did that. Actually. Nice. I'd bite the top off and just drink the brandy out of it. And, and just eat the rest. Sometimes you'll find, like, um, if they've been imported and they've been sitting around for a while, um, like you'll find them in rich German retail shops. Um, they only ship them during the winter, otherwise they'll melt in the other time of the year coming over. But um, the, the brandy, if it sits long enough in the chocolate, will crystallize the chocolate into sugar. Just the sugar crust on the inside. So I've had some where I bit into it, and it was just chocolate on the outside, sugar crust, and brandy, and it was incredible. So, but that was one of my favorite things about it. Is I just literally had brandy on the inside, and that was it. I mean, it was great. We'll have to get it for sure. 
Yeah, I can't wait till you buy me more. I have to look more. <laughs> yeah, this uh, tropical tart beer that we had, I don't know how to pronounce it. There it is again. It's super easy to drink. This Extremely easy to drink. Really Kauai uh, Kapolo. Yeah, a Hawaiian name. Uh, can't pronounce it. <laughs> but it was wonderful, very fruity, and extremely easy to drink. Definitely one of my favorites. Max, you want to get what you like I can check you out at any time. Sure, let's take it on. No, you're good. They're yeah, you're good, man. Doing this for a long time. Okay. Yeah, we've been doing this for a while now. Still talking about beer, and we've barely scratched the surface. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, let's uh, just let's keep, let's keep going. Let's hop on another one. Rapid fire. No. Rapid fire. Let's do this. <laughs> what would you like? Same one. Uh, not doubles back bone or the uh, wheat beer. Of course, because See, I'm the only one doing this appropriately. I'm rinsing my cup. I we are. We are, we are as well. All right, then. All right. Don't worry. Let's do that one. Ballast Point. Ballast Point is a brand that um, there's a hookah uh, guy that I follow on Instagram. A really cool guy. He lives up in uh, Michigan. Works on a freighter and I think shipping yard and, and goes on the freighter. Um, just has all sorts of really cool jobs. He's got cool locations, but uh, he loves craft beer, of course. Where is Ballast Point from? Because I've seen him more than once post pictures of Ballast Point beer. Uh, I didn't write it on here. Okay, maybe it, it should be on the bottom. But this one is supposed oh. to be watermelon. San is that right? San Diego. Oh, okay. So is it watermelon flavored? Yes. So this one, it's a double IPA. Are you ready? You go ahead. Uh, it's not going to back down from big flavors. Uh, it's a, a mash kettle dry hop blend. Uh, it creates a huge hop profile that is balanced uh, with a blast of watermelon. It's supposed to be refreshing. Ooh, cool. uh, this is a summer uh, summer drink. It smells amazing. Uh, the bitterness is 90. I don't quite know what that means. The bitterness is 90. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, <laughs> the food pairings uh, it shows a, a shrimp po' boy, a pineapple custard, Asiago, and uh, Manchego cheese. So basically just meat, cheese, and shrimp. So, and it's 10% by volume. It smells amazing. It's very 10%. fresh. 10%? 10%. Nice. It's a very... Higher alcohol content. It's a very fresh smell. So it's, yeah, it's a summer... Summer smell. Now I don't like IPAs, but if it's paired with watermelon to sweeten it up, it, it's supposed to be a blast of watermelon. It smells amazing. Oof. Taste is surprising. Yeah, it actually is. The watermelon. Taste. Oh, the wa watermelon is awesome. very yeah. Very much so on the back end. It's yeah. very IPA in your face. Right. The smell is misleading. <laughs> it's a punch at first. Yes. Very pungent. That's not a blast of watermelon. <laughs> it's more like a lingering of watermelon. Definitely a pale ale, immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I probably won't be able to finish this one. I'm not feeling it either. I'm not a huge fan of pale ales. Um, gosh, the smell is extremely misleading compared to the taste. That is a straight bitterness. Smells good coming in, tastes bad going down. Absolutely. <laughs> smells amazing, extremely bitter taste. Gosh, I wanted to like this so I, much. I, I did too. too. I thought I it was going to be like the last one. Uh, it's not the case. I wish we had some more. <laughs> I did too. I can, I can drink that all night. Okay. <laughs> all sorts of levels. But at least we can agree. This isn't a top contender. It's me. definitely not. 10 out of 10 would not drink again. Yeah. Oh, I had to down that one quick. I have so much in my college. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so hey, hey. Uh, 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 From Walking Dead, they had well, some guys from an Egan's group in this last couple of episodes. Uh, if you have to eat shit, Ooh. it's best to bite, chew, repeat, not to, uh, not to nibble. <laughs> <laughs> so just throw it back and chase it down. 
It's not an easy drink. <laughs> oh. It's not an easy drink to down. So if you're joining us and drinking the same thing that we are, which we encourage, enjoy. Look, if yeah. this was a Belgian white with, made with wheat, mm -hmm. with uh, with water, the watermelon, whatever they did to this, it, I think it would be phenomenal. Yeah, I, I get the watermelon in the bag now that yeah. I'm, I'm done drinking. And the watermelon's not bad. It's not like a hugely artificial watermelon. It would pair really well with Tangier's watermelon. Mm -hmm. But that IPA bites so freaking hard. Yeah. For me, we've talked about how some of these beers are supposed to have grassy tones. And for me, I feel like this is somewhere along the lines of someone biting into a watermelon, spilling it on the grass, and you're biting it with grass. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I mean, Eating watermelon you know, off the ground. He went there in his mind, and that's okay. We, <laughs> <laughs> we all go to different places. I'm a very visual when, person. That's when Hayden saying. drinks a beer, he thinks about <laughs> eating watermelon off the lawn. That's what I get at this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm getting. I'm a very visual person. That's what went through in my mind. That's how it's how. Oh, God, I have to finish it. <laughs> uh, I am going to finish mine. Um, begrudgingly, uh, but I'm going to finish up another room. Gentlemen, thank you so much for showing me some cool beers and sharing your wine, ice cream, and no it's been problem, fantastic. Josh. You're going to be getting the ice cream now, aren't you? I actually am. It's yeah. delicious. And well, once we, we've reached our weights, my wife's going to love that. <laughs> once we're off our, not off our diet, but like, you know, maintaining our right. goals. You can um, have each like day. That. Yeah, we've had, no. we've had one. <laughs> we have one once a week. I, I think I take more cheat days than she does. And I'm losing more weight than she is, so she's a little irritated. But that's well, that's, that's how guys are yeah. when it goes to yeah. dieting. Yeah. Woo! Goodness. <laughs> uh, I guess with Josh leaving, thank you again, Josh, for being on. Absolutely. Uh, Thanks for having me. Again, like, like I've always said, you're always welcome. Ooh, goodness. You I look forward to the next one. Didn't believe me saying it last time. <laughs> I believe it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a sponsor read. I just want to say before we do this, I am glad that this is over. Yeah, I, I am too. Thank the Lord. I am too. Uh, everyone, again, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, uh, Cloud9 Hookah. This is an establishment <laughs> that I currently work in. Okay, Cloud9 Hookah in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, without them uh, and the help that they give us, this podcast wouldn't be possible. Uh, Again, there's, it's a safe and great atmosphere. You can meet friends uh, after a hard day at work or uh, uh, hard classes or anything. They've always got something to help you relax. We have events so you can have a good time with your friends. You can come here by yourself, have a good smoke and study. It's just that sort of environment where it fits everyone's needs, no matter what you're really needing. That's really all I have to say about it. So uh, Cloud9 has been offering, uh, offering up a happy hour. They started that back last year. Uh, about November is when they started, I believe. Four to six. Uh, yeah, happy hours, four to six. It's a, a ten, ten dollar hookah. Mm -hmm. uh, after tax, you're looking at about eleven sixty or something like that. Yeah, which there is also gratuity on that. That is optional, but we do encourage it because that's what I take home. <laughs> um, so again, they have special events. Like I said earlier in the show, uh, on the twenty sixth, they have a speakeasy coming up. Uh, just Come down, have a good time, dress up, uh, listen to some really good music that's going to be going on. We have, we have multiple events monthly, and one of them to keep in mind is next month my band will be playing here. Again? Yes. Awesome. We're playing here again. We're going to be trying to play with the band All Deeds Done, if you've ever heard of them. Uh, also a local band here in Bowling Green. So feel free to stop by, and we do have an Instagram and Facebook as well that we keep updated with all of our events and any specials that we have going on. Drop the links. Look at Cloud9 Hook on Facebook or Instagram. You'll be able to find us. Oh, I thought you meant your band. Oh, my band. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look us up on Facebook. Uh, our name is Neighbor Love. Um, is that name going to stick now? We're hoping the name sticks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that name sticks. So, Neighbor Love on Facebook. You can find us. We also have a YouTube page, which we're going to be uploading more videos. And hopefully be doing some recording here in the next month. Nice. Yeah. So uh, Cloud9, again, four to six is ha uh, half off on a hookah for happy hour. Uh, they just started karaoke uh, every Thursday, so come on down for that. Thursday sing. at nine o'clock. Yep, Thursday at nine, uh, sing your hearts out. 
Um, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we have trivia nights on Mondays. Uh, that also starts at no. That starts at ten. Nine no, it starts at nine. Okay. Nine o'clock every Monday. Uh, nine o'clock every Monday. Um, so again, come on down and join the community that is Cloud Nine. Uh, I know Josh, Hayden, I myself will most likely be here. I will certainly be here. Uh, we actually have a promo code with Cloud Nine. Uh, if you didn't watch last episode, Josh helped us out. Uh, the promo code is ATCB20, ATCB20, and that gets you 20% off on your hookah. Uh, not available during happy hour, as your hookah is already half off. You can't stack promo or. Uh, well, coupons. it's about a third off, yeah, but well, still, that's a great yeah, deal. It's, it's, yeah, it's still a great deal. And the thing is, with us, I mean, paying that price for our hookahs, I feel as though. Our establishment here in Kentucky, um, I feel like we're one of the better ones, honestly, and that's a great deal and for a hookah at this point. I've, I've gone over this in the past couple episodes. It's, it's I've been to a lot of hookah cup, uh, lounges out I might, I might just be biased because I work here, and I I mean, I mean, love what we offer. Well, well, like I said, I've been to a lot of uh, hookah lounges out west, and a lot of them are just like, hey, this is what we're doing, this kind of smoke, we're not a clean place, just kind of do whatever. <laughs> This place is... Come in and sit down, we'll smack you something together. Yeah, and, this, and, and then they don't really get to know you. They, they just see you as your money coming through the door. This place, I mean... It's very personal. Yeah, everyone everyone gets to know each other. It's everyone, very social, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's one of the better lounges, one of the best lounges I've, ever, I've been to. Um, I mean, really, I haven't been to any other lounge that's been like this place has. Um, I, I mean, we have customers that come in literally every day. Yeah, I, it's crazy. I'd be one of them if I could, but <laughs> uh, but again, this place specializes in Tangiers, uh, which is made in San Diego. Eric does a great job on everything that he does. He's a very strong perfectionist when it comes to what he tries to get push out. Him, him, him himself is very personable because on every single package of Tangiers, his personal phone number is on every package. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can call him right now. If you buy a package of Tangiers, his cell phone number is right there on the package, and you can call him right then. Hmm. Might have to do that. Yeah, he's <laughs> the president of Tangiers. I don't want to call I, him. I wouldn't want to bother him like that. He, uh, he's been here a couple of times. Yeah, last time he was here, that's how I know this, because he showed me. He pulled it up, showed me the phone number on the back of the package, dialed it in on uh, someone else's phone, and it, the cell phone that he was holding in his hand literally rang. Call it anytime. Huh. The, uh, the, the first time I met Eric, he was here, we were doing a uh, video game night, or like retro game night or whatever, but uh, the P PlayStation had just, PlayStation 4 had just come out, so everyone was it's like, hey, ago. huh? It's a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, hey, why don't you come, or a lot of the friends that I had here were like, hey, why don't you get your PlayStation and we'll hook it up, we'll play, uh, what, were, what was, I don't remember what game was out that was uh, a big party game at the time. And, uh, PlayStation? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. But, uh, I'm buying this tomorrow, by the way. Nice. This stuff's delicious. But, uh, yeah, uh, I was getting ready to, to leave, and this guy with a, a bowler hat came up, and he, big bushy beard, whatever. And he goes, Oh, you're leaving? And I was like, Yeah, I gotta get my PlayStation and stuff. And, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna be right back though. And he's like, alright, cool. Uh, what, what, and we had a big old conversation about what we were smoking and how he felt about Tangiers and stuff. And I, I never got his name, I never realized who he was. Shook his hand, said bye, and when he got the PlayStation, came back, sat down, and had your conversation with him again as he was waiting for Josh. And then I realized that he was the president of Tangiers, and that, that was one of those, like, oh! I talked highly about your product, and you were awesome. <laughs> so he he's he's a really great guy. Uh, again, his lounge is in San Diego. It's uh, really close to Petco Park. Uh, it's just I believe it's just off one of the marina, one of the mini marinas, which doesn't really help pinpoint. But again, it's it's really close to Petco Park, I believe. Uh, so if you if you're going if you're down there, say hi to to Eric and uh, Help San Diego. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Pet where Petco Park is. I have no idea. <laughs> it's uh, Petco Park's one of the San Diego Padres. Padres. Oh. Yeah, that's their new stadium. I have no idea. So, uh, uh, I don't yeah. know much, apparently. <laughs> go, go down there, say hi to Eric for us, uh, mention our name. 
Uh, he might be something special. We don't know. I just want to say, at this point in our bro- like this podcast, <laughs> everyone must be just hammered drunk. Because I was listening to that conversation in detail. You said um and us uh, so many times. <laughs> no, I did not. Everyone is going to be drunk or watching See, us. see the, those words, um and uh, don't, don't drink to those yet. <laughs> those are just so in my vocabulary that it just it comes out and without me knowing. What's that one? Is that the, uh, the rain? That is the orange pale that ale. That one's going to be rough. Since we just did a pale ale, might as well knock out another one. Yeah, we'll knock out another one. I think there's another one too. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> for the people that enjoy pale ales, I apologize. They're just not No, me. pale ales are really good. I, I enjoy pale ales. I just... That last one, it promised watermelon. It smelled you got, so sweet. Yeah. But the, the flavor was not there. I've got my coals on for us, by the way. They're burning right now. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them. <laughs> Alright, I'm pouring myself less this time. Just <laughs> in case. That middle's hot. This one is the Dark Horse Rain and Blood Orange Pale Ale. So it's very citrusy. Easy now. Sorry, Q-Boy. supposed to be very citrusy. So where do I have it on here? Yeah, that just straight up tastes like an orange so, pale ale. So yeah, it smells just like an orange peel. Yeah, orange pale ale, that's what it is. Orange peel. So, yeah, this saying? one this one cracked me up. The description, the description for it. Our tribute to the late Jeff Hanneman and the greatest band of all time, Slayer. Mmm. Yeah, that makes sense with the name. Or Rain and Blood, yeah. Yeah. This pale ale is brewed with fresh blood oranges and blood orange juice that is hand squeezed at the brewery. It should be enjoyed fresh. Where's the color? Oh, I thought you were going to pull one up for your homie. So you no. <laughs> <laughs> It should be. No. <laughs> it should be enjoyed fresh and paired with delicious heavy metal Slayer. I don't have any Slayer available at the moment. Yeah, some copyright is probably there, so we can't really play it. Yep. But so, I can imagine in my mind, just it's there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a five point five percent alcohol by volume. Uh, Lower one as well. And it's only available between March and May. Really? Yep. That's interesting. Well, so, that makes sense, actually, with the oranges. Yes. Um, and the, uh, that information I got right off of Dark Horse uh, Brewery.com, which is uh, the brewery itself. Yeah, that's just. So again, it's it's an orange peel. Let's just go ahead and just dive in. Yeah. Dive in. Not as bad. This one is tolerable. Yeah, that's. I enjoy this. I would, I would get this again. Just off that one. Myself step. some more. That's just, pretty. That's pretty good. Just off that one, I, I would get yeah. this again. I kind of wish Taylor was here just to see her reactions to all of these. Oh, she'd probably hate this. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I, she'd be drunk already. I mainly, got <laughs> these, I mainly got these just to see her reactions. I'm really sad that <laughs> she didn't want to be here today. It's okay. I'm not worried about it. But she would be, she'd probably be drunk already and talking a lot. But that's her. It's okay. She would be seen. We love Taylor. Taylor. It's Bears, okay. Beats, Battlestar Galactica. Bears, Beats, Battlestar Galactica. Gotta keep it there. I'm gonna try and soundbite that from one of our first podcasts. Oh, you have to. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, I'm gonna move my mouth. It's just Bears, Beats, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Let's be quiet for a minute. Okay, I think yeah. I think I'm gonna try and try and slip it in there. <laughs> we'll see how it works. If it doesn't also, happen, that was an awkward stops. silence. You know what to do. That wasn't an awkward silence. I, I told us to be quiet. That wasn't an awkward silence. Still a silence. I just want them to drink. <laughs> drink, <laughs> drink. <laughs> uh. Go ahead and top yourself off. Top yourself off? I've got plenty. Yeah, just go ahead and top yourself off. Just, this, just finish it. This is really enjoyable. It's I can see this as a summertime drink. Oh yeah. 
This one well, is. Well, even though it's not a summer drink when it comes out, it's very much so enjoyable. Yeah. I don't know what was. I could drink this in the morning. Right. Yeah, this there's, is not a bad There's one. my vitamin C. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the oranges you need in a day. Sit around before going to work, have yourself a few of these. This is going to be a very long podcast. If we're finished all these, absolutely. I don't even know what time it is right now. Uh, let's see. How long have we been doing this? We've been shooting almost an hour. That's it? A little more. Wow, all right. <laughs> oh, we probably need to put those coals on. Yeah, they're about ready. Besides, we can always um, save these for another day. No, they need to be enjoyed fresh. <laughs> all right, I guess we're gonna finish all these. We're, we're probably gonna be a little tipsy at the end of this, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. I am too. You have to drive home. <laughs> okay. All right, cool, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not messed up at all right now. Again, I'm, I'm more of a beer drinker, so my tolerance is really high. See, I'm going to be real tipsy at the end of this. And then we're not, we're not really drinking the full bottle. True. So, we're drinking the full bottle, but not, you know what I mean? We're not. We've had about four beers each at this point with differentiating alcohol volumes. Yeah. So. I would say if we were drinking light beer, we probably had about six each at this point. If we were drinking light beer? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's fair. <sighs> yep. This one, very, very enjoyable. We should do that blueberry stout next. Ooh, that's going to be very different compared to this. But yeah, Dark Horse, Rain in Blood, it's an orange pale ale. Oh my god, hold on, hold on! Hold everything. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I've already drank all mine. Let me see yours. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, again, we're smoking. Well, actually, uh, I'll do you one better. That's what I should have done first, but. Yeah, that's a good man. Yeah. That's pretty solid. So this mix, which is the uh, Prince of Grey with the, uh, what do you want? Oh, I don't want this. You do want it. I don't <laughs> want it. It's, no, you do want it. Try some. What did you do? I did nothing but let it sit and breathe. Really? Still not great, but much better. Try it. Really? It's not as strong, as it? it? doesn't have the bite anymore. It, it's much better than it was. Oh, that's a lot better. Yeah, yeah that's a lot better. I could drink that. All right, so... Um, yeah. Slightly retracting what we said about this. It's not as bad as we thought. You just gotta let it breathe. Yes. Like a fine wine. Yeah, the <laughs> ballast point, the watermelon derived. Thank you. So, uh, not as bad. I'm retracting what I said about it. It's not as bad. Still wouldn't enjoy it all that much, but not as bad. But we're smoking Prince of Grey, Melon Blend, and Mandarin Orange. And then this is Blood Orange in it. So with the Blood Orange of the, of the drink, and then the Mandarin Orange of this, it really brings out that orange and less of the bitterness. Um, I mean, that is the pale ale from it. Yeah. I don't know. This that was that's a, this is a great pairing for that Absolutely. for that drink. Not a bad drink at all. I could I could sit down and enjoy that. Still, I do have a favorite. Yeah, that Hawaiian one was the best, man. Yeah, the Hawaiian. I don't one. know what it was. That's just, it's just delicious. Yes. I could drink that all day. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best. Well, but it's it's up there. It's it's the most enjoyable one I've had so far, besides the habanero. That's what I was. Yeah, I, 
Of course, this is 100% opinionated, by the way. Yeah, definitely. We're, again, we're no, no professional when it comes to alcohol or anything. We're good at making it disappear. Very true. <laughs> but but I, honestly, I'm like... I gotta slow down. <laughs> well, we can talk about something else before we do it in the next one, if you like. Well, no, I'm saying I, I drink a lot. Oh, last, I last night I had a show. I drank a lot. The night before that, it was just a night. I drank. <laughs> <laughs> but so far, out of my favorites, it's Country Boy is going to be on top, definitely. It's delicious, absolutely. That bite that it has, it's wonderful. I'd put the Hawaiian one next. This one, no, the banana bread would go at yes, third. Yes, banana bread was delicious. The Sweet Baby Jesus was good as well. The Eun Mas Toro Jesus, that one's my fourth. I wouldn't, put, I wouldn't put that as my fourth, but it was good. See, this, yeah, this would be my fourth. The sweet baby would be my fifth. I don't know. Maybe they'd be in the same same spot. I don't know. That sweet baby was really good. Yes, it was. Yeah, the first one we started out with sweet baby Jesus. That was good. The uh, what was it? Peanut butter. Yeah. Chocolate peanut butter porter. Yeah, that one was really good. I feel you there. Come on. Battery's kind of getting low, but I'm turning this up. I don't care. <laughs> So, which one are you? You doing the black flag? Yeah, no, this is the uh, five pounds. No, it is black flag, you're right. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda cut from the hookah and the beer part. We're gonna go into our vaping for a second. We started out the, with vaping, but we're gonna go back into it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> with me being in vaping now, the past three weeks, I've been trying to find out fla f flavors that I like. I'm more of a, a custardy, kind of a, a mellow... Similar um, with tobacco feel to it. Yeah. Like a sweet tobacco. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like the, the sweet... Uh, there's some sweet ones I really like, um, but I'm not a big... I, 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 just, I just want something mellow and chill. Of course. Um, I found this brand called Five Ponds. Uh, one of the vape shops out in White House, Tennessee sells this. I don't, I don't know where else to get it other than ordering online. Um, the, the little, I don't know, what's the milligram? It's 30 milligrams. Comes in a vial like this. It's a... So it's a 30 ml bottle. Yeah. It's a... Your nicotine content's at three? Like my nicotine's at three, just because I'm, I'm still getting used to it. And plus, I, I like more flavor, so three makes more sense. Yeah, I always go with three just so uh, it's an easy, smooth smoke. You get that flavor as well as the nicotine content. It's right. not overpowering. Um, most of their flavors I've seen so far, has, they've all been at a 50-50 mix of PG, VG. Um, with that tank yours, though, you can go up to 70. Well, with this tank, I can do both uh, drip, uh, drip and... Uh, uh, I, I can't remember the other one. You either drip or use a tank. Yeah, I, I, I can do both. It just I, I, I really like so that's the RTA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's either you have it in a tank function or it does have built-in coils with it. Yeah. Um, and then the, the way that this uh, this tank is set up, it has three coils set, uh, built in. So it's mm -hmm. it's really cool looking. Um, but again, this company is called Five Ponds. They've I don't know, my favorite one right now is Symmetry 6. Um, to me, the, they haven't really re released a, much of a, a flair, flavor profile that I've seen. I watched a video on YouTube not too long ago where it talks about like a rhubarb pie kind of going to your grandma's place and she's baking freshness. So you, you're supposed to get like an oat and a sweetness of some sort of pie. Uh, but he kept pushing rhubarb, and so I, I figure it's supposed to be rhubarb. I don't get a fruit to, I don't get a fruit really from it, or a, a, that rhubarb pie feel, but I do get like a, a crust and some su sugar, molasses, whatever. Uh, Very sweet, almost cinnamon type thing. Yeah, uh, Five Ponds has been my favorite to Bay Pond so far. The one that you have, again, is also from, or the, the, the one that I also have, is from Five Ponds. It's called a Black Flag Risen. He's letting it's me use it some out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tobacco flavor. It's very creamy. Um, what, what would you say from it since you're just now kind of smoking it? 
gonna try again. I've, I've only smoked it the once when I first got it, and I ran out of the bottle within the first day. So that's how much I really enjoyed it. And with, with the TVF4, I mean, it's it's a juice sucker. It, basically, it's yeah, thirsty. Basically what I get from it, it's a sweet tobacco flavor, and that's the main thing I'm getting out of it. Is that's just a sweet tobacco flavor. That's really all I get from it. So uh, the company that we, I, or the, the vape shop that I get all this stuff from is called Vape Empire out in, again, White House, uh, Tennessee. I said, uh, again. I, just, I couldn't think of Tennessee. And I pointed, uh, that's two drinks. I'm starting to feel <laughs> it, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, personally, I shop at a place called Wildcat Vapor here in Bowling Green. That's my favorite spot to go. Literally, they hook me up with everything. That's where I've got my mod, my atomizer. I always get my juice from there, and that's just that's where I go. I've shopped in there. It's really cool that well, <clears throat> everything's custom. The the con that I have there is you can't smoke in there, and they don't have samples. You can't. Well, you can vape in there. Can you? Because on the on the door it said no smoking. Yeah, no smoking cigarettes, but you can vape your heart away. Oh, they'll let you vape in there? Absolutely. Oh, I didn't see, because when I went they in there... They vape in there themselves. Well, when I went in there, there was like five people and no one was vaping. You can, yeah, it's just no smoking cigarettes. Well, there. okay, that makes sense. You can vape in there to your heart's desire, but... I, I wish they had samples. That's, that's my biggest thing. That's what I like about Vape Empire, is everything they make in-house, they have samples of. We'll see with them. Actually, they, they have samples of the five ponds too. So with Wildcat, it's very hard to make samples just because everything is made custom to your liking. Right, I understand. Like they have a lab in the back, and they make everything custom. Right. So it's hard to have samples for you know two hundred plus thousand different flavors that you can make. You know. But I mean, the, out of the like the base flavors, they should have. I feel they should have a sample of, so you can get a feel of. They, okay, have, they, have, they have small samples, but it's hard to do with the tank. Yeah, well, when I go to do samples, I, I have the RDA. Ah, I see. So, or the your R velocity. Yeah, my, my knockoff velocity. It, well, it's a clone, which clones are very, very popular just because yeah, was, the authentics are crazy expensive. It was a $20 clone. Yeah, <laughs> the, the authentics are extremely expensive. Yeah, the, the authentic velocity. I think was like eighty dollars or close to a hundred dollars. Yeah, which me I have an authentic uh, Troll V two, which I got actually as a gift, so I didn't have to spend you know eighty bucks on it. You lucky fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cuss! I think you're feeling it. You're starting to feel psycho, aren't you? <laughs> That's what I just said earlier. <laughs> I never said this is a cuss free zone. Oh. I, I never said that. Okay. I mean, we, on the first episode, I think we were dropping bombs everywhere. <laughs> trying not to, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, we're trying not to. We're trying, we're to, trying not friendly, to cuss. We're trying not to cuss. Family friendly. The, but... uh, the second episode, I don't think we cussed at all, just because it was Josh and I. Um, well, the thing is, I mean, whenever we drink this much, we're going to drop something. Yeah. It's going to happen. It, it'll happen. It's going to slip. I haven't done it yet. It's gonna slip. <laughs> I just don't care. <laughs> Good enough for me. Good enough for me. I mean, I I care, but it's getting to that point. I can I can feel. Starting to feel a little I'm gonna, bit. Out. I'm gonna sit on the couch for a little bit after this. Relax I'm gonna walk. I'm walking home, and I'm just gonna go to sleep. Well, you live a minute away. I do live a minute away, and I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> Hopefully, eventually. I don't work till eight o'clock tomorrow, so I'm gonna sleep to my heart's content. Very nice. <laughs> and I'm gonna use your uh, PlayStation to watch Hulu while I, while I lay down. It's gonna be good. <coughs> Which, thank you so much for that Hulu subscription. Appreciate it. I forgot what Hulu is on there. Yeah. That is right. At least uh, someone's using. It. I'm, I'm using my brother, my stepbrother's Netflix. So. <laughs> At least someone's using my, my Hulu. Absolutely. What, uh, what, what have you been watching Hulu? I have been watching regular show. Okay. <laughs> I, I literally started from the beginning. When, how long did it take you to figure out the Hulu was on there? I just figured it out like a week ago. Did you really? Yeah. See, I completely forgot it was on there. I, I would have told you to name one. 
See, I I tried on Netflix and it asked for a password. I was like, well, I don't have Netflix. No, I don't Let's see that. if he has Hulu. And you absolutely do, which mm -hmm. Game of Thrones is on there. Yes, I'm, it is. I'm about to start catching up because I'm only on season four of Game of Thrones. I know it's blasphemy. People have already told me spoilers and I hate it, but I need to catch up. <laughs> uh, it's me, hard to avoid spoilers. I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the last uh, sponsor read. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, you do that, I'll go right back. Okay. Um, so, again, we have uh, White Squirrel bottles here. Uh, two growlers. White Squirrel is our uh, second sponsor. They're right down the street from Cloud9 off of, off of Broadway. Uh, do you enjoy a great atmosphere, relaxing with your friends, drinking a cold one? I know I do. Hayden does. Everyone I know really, really does enjoy, enjoy a place that you can get with your friends and watch sports or just talk shop. Uh, they have amazing food. I love their food there. They have this duck poutine which is absolutely out of this world. Uh, they also have a chorizo burger. Uh, I mean it's, you get that spicy chorizo that, and then the jalapenos that are on top. It's just, it's just the right amount of heat that doesn't kill your palate. Everything they, they make there, uh, they have I think six different, six or seven different brews that uh, they make in house. It's some of the best beer that I've had uh, craft wise at a uh, brewery that's not in Virginia. The Kolsch is delicious. Yes, the, uh, they have that Kolsch. My favorite is the Nut Brown Ale. They actually just brought that back. Uh, it, it sells out quick. That's just how good their, their beer is out there. Uh, they have a jalapeno colch that once they brew it, I mean, it's probably in store probably probably a week or two, and then they're sold out again. But their honey colch is excellent as well. Yeah, they actually, that's one of their newer ones, is the honey colch. That's their replacement for the jalapeno now. Yes, because yeah, well, they're out of the jalapenos. Yeah. I went there yesterday, and they were out of the jalapeno, so the honey one was also delicious. So, um... And then they also carry a bunch of different uh, breweries from local breweries and state local breweries. Uh, they carry a lot of their, their uh, craft beers also. Uh, they, they have special events and everything. They do a trivia night on Sunday night. So if you want to do trivia Sunday night, you can, you can definitely do that. They have a really cool band that does trivia where uh, they'll ask a question. Like one of the cool uh, questions I saw or I heard when I was there, they had a. Like the question was this famous artist from the Southern Hemisphere uh, had a number one title for uh, a couple months. Name the song, name the artist. And they played uh, the song from Lord uh, Royals. And I thought that was the coolest thing where they actually, I mean, it was a live band playing. No way. It, yeah, playing and singing. It was really. It was. It was acoustic. So it was a girl playing guitar, and then a, a guy playing keyboard. It's just the whole thing was. It was really awesome how they had it all broke down. So trivia night there on Sundays. Come to us on Monday for trivia night. Definitely. Um, I don't know where else I was at on this. You can follow White Squirrel on Twitter. Their Twitter <coughs> handle is. At White Squirrel BG, uh, that they post stuff to keep you updated with all the different stuff they have going on. Uh, they post daily, usually three, five times a day, about different deals or specials going on, when their happy hour is. They just started doing a Sunday brunch, and they have a completely it's different delicious. menu on it's their delicious. Sunday brunch. Yeah. Um, their, I mean, the, their food is absolutely amazing. The breakfast poutine. Yes. Get it. It I mean, is amazing. Everything White Squirrel has been doing, it's been amazing. No matter uh, what you get out there, it's going to be amazing. Yes. Yeah. That is very true. Um, I was there last, yesterday, and it, it was packed, but I, you, I mean, they found you a chair pretty quick, and it, even being packed, the, the food, the food quality was top. Top service, the food quality, I mean, the amount of beverages that they have, mm -hmm. it's just all around just a great place to go. So again, White School Brewer, we thank you guys so much for helping us out on this podcast. 
Uh, Sean, go down there and meet Sean. He's one of the, the best best store owner or bar owners I've ever met. Yeah. Uh, again, we have the two growlers. We have the aluminum that's thirty five dollars. We have the glass one, which is twenty five dollars. Once you pay buy those, it's fifteen dollars to get those filled. Uh, I mean, just White School Brewery is one of the best things to ever come to Bowling Green, other than Cloud Nine. Uh, as I mean, far this, as the local business goes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this this whole Broadway Avenue right here, it it's filled it's, with little shops that you can always find something. Yeah, it, it's a great place if you're a college student or just wanting to relax and meet friends, get get with friends. It's it's just this whole area is it's expanding and growing so much. I'm excited to be here in Kentucky for it. Oh, yeah, with Bowling Green, I mean it's one of the it's just one of those towns that's really, it's growing into a city of its own. You know, it's not as big as... What were we drinking? <laughs> I, okay, I'm gonna pause for my spiel about Bowling Green. Uh, Sorry, no, did fine. you pour that already? I did. Uh, oh, okay. Was... <laughs> uh, this one's also 10.2% alcohol by volume. It's a high one as well. We're probably gonna be drunk by the end of this. It's gonna be great. Uh, oh yeah, this will be fun. Oh yeah, but this one is called Horn Dog, and I look, you might have noticed I looked at it a bit strangely a second ago, because it has the strangest image of this just crazy looking dog with a giant horn on its head. But it's called Horn Dog. It's a barley wine style ale. Oh, okay. It, it, it smells like a, it smells like a pale ale, so I don't really know what to expect from it. It's, so, so this one's ten point two, like you said. Very, it's, it's, it's a high alcohol content beer. It's a very limited release. Um, the specialty malts is a. It's very malty. It's caramel, uh, a lot of caramel. The hops they use is a German Pearl, a Northern Brewer, and a Cascade. I don't know hops. I, I wish I did. I need to get more familiar with hops. Uh, Horn Dog requires big, fruity, tangy, or spicy flavors to balance the sweet malt barley wine flavor uh, notes. Malty, sweet, with hints of brown fruits. Uh, an example of figs, dates, raisins. I do love dates. It is one thing. And there is the trash. I don't know if I've had a date. Dates are delicious. Last time I had a date, it was wrapped in bacon, but it was so delicious. <laughs> I don't know if I've had those. But anyway, it's but uh, it's a warming uh, warming alcohol tingle pairs with uh, creamy blue or uh, Stilton cheese. I don't, I don't know what a Stilton cheese is. Uh, jerk spices, so it'd be really good with occasion kind of uh, or a Jamaican jerk meal. I kind of get that. I just took a sip out of it. Oh, did you? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's a uh, it's good with strong salads. Fruity or rum flavored desserts. I'd be interested to cook with this. Yeah. It has a great smell to it, good color. I mean the smell is pretty much the taste that you're gonna get. It's 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 a bitter sweet taste as well. Very much so bittersweet. That's yeah, very bittersweet. Yeah. That's uh It's different. That's not what I would expect. Yeah, the back end off of it, you know, the first punch is very bitter, but it sweetens out the more it lingers. And of course, we're not experts again, but this is just what I'm getting off of. This would not be a daily drinker for me. I, I'm glad to have tasted it. I will buy it again, but it's not, it's not on my top list. And apparently, I believe it's Flying Dog is the brewing Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Flying Dog is the, is the brewing company. Horn Dog is the name of that drink. Yeah, I looked at it because the image of this is crazy looking. Mm -hmm. Very cool though. Very cool. It's like a hyena with a horn. Pretty much. Like if a graffiti artist had made it, that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. The here. smell is... The smell is... It's pleasant. It's, it's very IPA-ish. Yes, I, I don't know why it's... 
You would think it would be sweeter, but it's not. Well, I, yeah, with the, with the three hops, I guess it would be an IPA. Yeah. But it's... It doesn't label itself as an IPA. See, it has three hops, but it comes off very malty as the thing. Right. The first thing you notice is his enormous horn. Then you see he has a cute face, nice body, and a charming personality. But mostly you just notice his enormous horn. Wonderful. That's, that's the description of the picture on the, <laughs> uh, on the bottle. Sounds like an innuendo, if you ask And it's... Uh, I think so, too. <laughs> and it looks like it's set in a desert landscape because there's cactuses behind him. He has really weird shoulder blades. That's a weird looking dog. Maybe this they, would not be a daily drinker. Yeah. Maybe they base this off the chupacabra. It's a good assumption. Because he has fangs. I mean, all dogs have fangs, but these are like vampire fangs. And then he's in the desert. Chupacabra's from Mexico. <laughs> I think Nick's drunk. <laughs> I think I am too. <laughs> also, we're talking about chupacabras. Which is a whole other topic that we can get into because I love like a myth, like See, mythology and everything. I'm hoping Taylor will be on this next show so we can do like a, a, a conspiracy theory. Oh god. I don't know. Something. Don't, don't get her started. I, it'd be funny as hell. <laughs> That's like the. Uh, I, I got her into the Beatles conspiracy. Yeah, about uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah, where my stepbrother got me into that about Paul McCartney and, uh, had died back in the '60s. Paul is dead, and that's why uh, most of the the uh, album art and everything from uh, Abbey Road Abbey Road on shows Paul McCartney in a different angle or something like that, where Paul McCartney is a different person. He's the outcast. So it's it's interesting the the things that I've found the things that Taylor has found. Uh, See, I didn't know it, you talked about that. What? Paul McCartney. Yeah, I got her into looking at that. I don't know what to talk about, <laughs> honestly. It's like if you listen to that one song by the Beatles, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, Somewhere along the songs it says like Paul is dead or something like that. Yeah, at the end of uh, oh, I can't think of the song. But if you listen to the the background, supposedly it says I buried Paul. Uh, I think Ringo says it. <coughs> but um, what is that song? This is, I can't, time, this is the time to drink. We're bringing up conspiracies. <laughs> I can't think of that song, but um, there's there's just there's different symbolisms and whatnot within uh, the Beatles' history that indicates that maybe Paul is a different person. Um, one of the, the biggest pictures I've seen is that uh, someone snapped a picture of Paul McCartney on a balcony, and he's playing the guitar or his bass uh, right hand. He's a left-handed bass player. Interesting. Or he's playing a guitar right-handed, but he's left-handed in person. And on the t on the cover of uh, uh, Abbey Road, it shows him holding a cigarette in his right hand. And I mean, if you're left-hand dominant, you'd expect it to be in his left hand. I don't know. There's there's different things. And that that whole album cover itself shows. Uh, uh, John in all white as it's supposed to be Jesus. Then it Very shows. Good, yeah. Well, then it shows. Uh, I, don't know, I can't think of who else. Then it shows someone, one of the other members, wearing like a, a tuxedo as if they were going to a wedding. Then it shows uh, Paul barefoot with a cigarette in his right hand, and, and like. Uh, oh, is he the one that was barefoot? Yeah. And, well, because when you get buried or in a casket, they don't put shoes on you because your feet are so swollen that they don't have shoes to fit you, and it wouldn't fit in the casket anyway. That's very interesting, actually. So, and then on the very end, it has some one of the other members dressed in blue, blue like a, a Canadian uh, jumpsuit, 
uh, as if they were a, a grave digger. Um, Interesting. So, it, and then, and then, supposedly on a car it says it, uh, would have been, or uh, I don't remember exactly what it says, but it's like should have been this age or something like that. And the license plate reflects reflects that if Paul McCartney was still alive, he would have been that age. So it's it's yeah it's definitely something to, to think about. I don't quite believe it, but it's out there and it does show maybe he got facial reconstruction for some sort. I don't know. Um, what's the song? Uh, it the life in a day. That's the song. Uh, it starts off where he he blew his mind out in the car. Uh, he didn't notice the light had changed. Um, uh, no one, no one would have believed he was from the House of Lords or something like that. Uh, it all co coincides where the story is that Paul got really angry during uh, recording an album and got into his car, ran through a red light, and someone T-boned him. He died in an accident. So it's it's really interesting the the theory behind it, how it all coincides. But I don't, I don't quite. Well, I mean, We've all went to the dark side of the web and watched videos and read articles about conspiracies. They're super interesting. I don't really know like, if they're believable, some of them, but they're all very interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting, on, to getting a show together where we can all talk about conspiracies and stuff. Uh, I think it'd make for good content. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to talk about the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who all would be interested in that. Um, please. Drop a comment or something. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, just it would be it would be fun to do a show like that. I yeah. think. Um, do you want to finish the last two? Sure, that's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll put this one away. Uh, yeah, I'm not. We I'm didn't not drink big, much of it, but it's not. A, I didn't finish it. I'm not a big fan of it. I'll, I'll go ahead and down it. I finished that one, so. Oof. That one was not great. All right, let's see what we got left. Blueberry, that's what you want. Yep, this is the blueberry stout. Where do I have that one? Dark Horse as well. Yep, here it is. So, um, for Dark Horse, it's called Trace Blueberry Stout, which is it's their third drink on their stout series. Uh, this stout is full-bodied. It's brewed with malted barley. Uh, fresh blueberries added after fermentation. I'm kind of disappointed in that because I think fermented blueberries would have given it a more blueberry taste. I have, have more pungent. I have had this before. I really enjoy it though. Ooh. It's sweet but not too sweet. Very much so blueberry. Um, the nose is uh, where you begin to realize this stout is on, of a, on a league of its own. The blueberry, chocolate, and roasted aromas lead the way to a very pleasant drinking experience, uh, which leaves you wanting the next December to arrive sooner than last year. So it's a seasonal beer. Uh, it does not. Oh, available as November release. So yeah, it would be a, a seasonal. Is it That's what so. This one's a very dark as well. It's a it's a very dark bluish red. So it has like the the raspberry ish. Uh, Head on it, but it's seven point five percent alcohol by volume. Yes, sir. Again, it it, it smells blueberry, um, yes, it does. but it's again it's a stout, so it's going to be a little a bold and robust. Bold and robust. Goodness, good job. Uh, and again, like I said, the head, it's its kind of reddish, bluish. Yeah, very much uh, so reddish. It smells very blueberry-esque, which, well, pairing with this hookah-wise, I would just do straight blueberry. Just straight blueberry. That would be... Yeah. I can... That's delightful, though. See, I, I never got the chocolate before, but now, now I am getting the chocolate. There's chocolate in that? Yeah, it's chocolate roast and aromas. Oh, okay. Chocolate See, and aromas. And roasted aromas. The main thing I get out of it is just blueberry, but it's 
It's a good, that's a good beer. I like that. As far as dark beers go, I would definitely do this one. Which with dark beers, of course, it's more for sipping, whereas like if you drink Miller Lite or something, you're gonna drink it real fast. For this, definitely sipping alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like a, it's not like a Guinness. Yeah. Yeah, Guinness is very drinkable. This is very drinkable as well. But I would much prefer to sip this because it is very flavorful and everything. <laughs> and it's funny because I feel like we're doing something that's almost like a wine tasting, except how most people do it that are cheap. We don't spit it out, we just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't waste good alcohol. Even if it's bad, it's still a good alcohol. I'll rephrase that you can't drink or you can't waste good beer. True. You pour yourself a glass of beer, you better finish it. Woo. That's good though. I do like this one a lot. And for those of you at home watching this, I really hope, out of everything that we do, at least buy this one, just so you can try it. If you're not used to dark beers, or you're not used to beer in general, that one's not a bad one to go to. If you're looking to get into some dark beers, yeah, that would, a be a good, to go to. that would be a good starter for dark beer. Um, I don't know. I, I, I want to say the On Mas Toro Jesus, that 12%. I mean, I want to say this, this would be a good start also. But again, it's more of a dessert beer than it is. Go ahead and chug at a, a party. Yeah, see, I'm not much on a beer like that where it's like a dessert beer. This one, though, it's sweet, but it's not overwhelmingly bitter either. It's a it's a good drink overall, I would say. I did enjoy that much more. Sure, I'll let you go ahead and finish that off. No, oh, I'll let you finish it. Yeah? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> But still, a very good beer, and anyone drinking dark beer for the first time, this is a good one to go to. That's actually not the one I thought it was. The blueberry? Yep. There's another blueberry beer that I've had that has a, a three-headed dog on the front. I don't remember what the company was. I got it at IGA. Okay. And it's just called a blueberry beer. And it's a lot bluer in color. I'll have to find that. I'll talk about it on the next, next yeah. episode. Yeah, that one wouldn't be bad. So yeah, we'll knock out this uh, dragon's blood, or yep. dragon's milk. We're just trying to move this along because I know we're taking forever to get through all this. Yeah, this is <laughs> it's getting there. Yeah, this is going to be a long one for sure. So anyone anyway, that's still watching, thank you so much for watching for this length of time. We do appreciate it. Again, I want to... You're just watching a couple guys drink some beer and talk about it. Yeah. That's about it. And yeah. conspiracy theories every now and then. <laughs> I want to bring out, uh, again, we have a promo code with uh, uh, Cloud9. Oh uh, it's AC, or AT as the, yeah, ATCB20. This one's dark as well. Get you 20% off on uh, your hookah, not available during happy hour. We also have promo code at White Squirrel. I meant to bring it up, I forgot. Uh, it's ATCB10, and I get you 10% off your food order only at White Squirrel Burberry. Now, is everyone gonna know about that, or is that just Sean? I'm hoping Sean told everyone. I'm not entirely sure. Because um, I actually haven't tried it. I talked to Sean yesterday on a impromptu uh, meeting. I didn't know he was going to be at White Squirrel, and then just kind of ran into each other. So hopefully he shared the information along. I've talked to a couple of people that work there, and they're like, oh, I had no idea we had something going on. Yeah. So um, if you're there, try and ask for Sean and see what he says. Um, he's a busy guy, so he might not be available. He was there yesterday. Saturday? Yeah, he was there Saturday. Yeah, he was yeah. setting people down, yeah. Yeah, he, uh... I would say he's there for most of the time. 
He, he tries to be. Sunday, he said it's his family day, so he tries to be just home, not, not there, uh, unless they really need him. Uh, but he, he tries to be there most most time. Yeah. So. Yeah. What was it? Uh, ATCB 10? 10. Get ten. your 10 percent off on your food order. Yeah. So if you're a white squirrel here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, ATCB 10 will get you 10 percent off your meal. Oh, anything else, really? <laughs> the way that Kentucky does their alcohol and stuff, you can't really discount alcohol. Um, it's because it's federal regulated and stuff. As so. far as your food goes, though. But yeah, t ten percent off a off a meal a poutine or the a duck the, poutine, which yeah. is delicious. God, is it delicious? I'm going there tomorrow. <laughs> I, I might. I just might. I'm going there tomorrow when I wake up. I'm going there. I'm getting myself some duck poutine. It's gonna be delicious. See, and white squirrels open from four to whatever. Well. When I went there yesterday, and they were open before four o'clock. The thing was, though, their kitchen doesn't open till four. Ooh. Yeah. So you can go there before four o'clock, have a few drinks, but the kitchen actually opens up at four o'clock. The brunch, I think it's only reserved for Sunday. Yeah, the brunch is only Sunday, and it starts at eleven. And at yeah, and at certain times they actually have a buffet available. Really? Yes. I, I didn't know they do the buffet. I can't remember what times it, what times it was, but they do have a buffet available as well, just in case you want to try certain things before you go in at some point and buy a meal. So that is available as well. I'm not entirely sure what days it is or the time in general, but we're going to make sure to get on that and make sure you guys know about it. Yeah? Is it stout? It's a stout. <laughs> it's a stout. It's a it's a bourbon barrel stout. It's uh, eleven percent. Of course it is. Yeah. Yep. That's not bad though. Uh, that's smooth. That's very smooth. It's very smooth. It's a uh, chocolate malt. I can get that. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, two different kinds of hops: uh, Glacier and the Nugget. It's an American ale yeast. Uh, this was first brewed in two thousand one. Pairings is like red, uh, red meat, smoked foods, balsamic, rich cheese, and dark chocolate. Yeah, I feel like I'm just honestly just drinking like dark chocolate. Like a very rich dark chocolate. You, you, Somewhat bitter. You get that bourbon taste. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's not a bourbon burn, but you no. get the taste of bourbon. Very much so. Yeah, no burn whatsoever, but you get a slight taste of bourbon with it. Like imagine if you're eating a bourbon ball or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It's very much so like that. It, very much. So if you had a dark chocolate covered bourbon ball, that's what this is like drinking. So it's a, a stout with roasty malt characters and in, intermingled with deep vanilla tones. All like dancing. Well. Huh? Very much so vanilla, yeah. Yeah. All, all, all dancing in an oak bath. I love how they phrase this. Yes. Yeah, dancing. Again, I, I pulled that off of the, the website, New Holland Brew. Um, I like it. It's I, not bad. I do? But again, it's not one of my tops. Yeah, not a daily drinker, but it's good, for sure. Still, daily drinker for me. The Hawaiian one. Yeah, the Hawaiian one. That's... I would drink that daily. Yeah, that's delicious. But this one as well, I would recommend this as well for a beginner at dark beers because it's it's not overpowering whatsoever. It's just it's just dark. Just don't let that scare you or anything. It's just, yeah, none of these drinks should scare you at all. I mean, except for that one. The the watermelon, the ballast <laughs> point. Watermelon. The, see again, the ballast point. You let it sit for five 20, minutes. Twenty minutes. I would say. Twenty minutes. I wouldn't say twenty minutes. That, that's a lot of breathing. That just we let it sit for five minutes, and I still didn't care for it. Ten five. minutes. Yeah. Something let, like that. Let the ballast point sit for a little bit. That way it can breathe and mellow out more. It's like a vintage wine. You have to let it sit for a certain amount of time. Let yeah. Let it breathe. Yeah. Maybe we just didn't spin it enough. Who knows? <laughs> I don't understand why wine drinkers do that. Because it, it aerates. It aerates the wine. So it lets it breathe. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't just, we didn't spend enough. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, you don't want to aerate really a beer. Nope, I was just making a point. But. Whew. It does leave that. Very that much. milk so. does. Yeah. My mouth is getting real dry from that one. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna. I Not really, a bad beer though. I do like the taste of it. But I really wish we had one of that wine. Oh yeah, I wish we did too. I'm gonna get some tomorrow, for sure. I'm gonna go back for it. Yeah, not bad at all. Whoo, goodness. I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling I'm alive. Be a minute before I can drive home. <laughs> but I'm feeling good. Yeah, feeling, feeling solid right now. Do you want that one or the wine ice cream? To take home? Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to take that home real quick. Ooh. Yeah. Feeling it. Oh, yeah. For anybody at home that's drinking with us. I hope they're feeling just like we are. They're probably feeling it more. If they're alone by themselves and have all this. That's very true. They're going to be feeling it a lot. which They're probably going to be spending a bit, but it is worth it. What should the title of this episode be? Drunk boys. <laughs> Drunk boys? Mm. Eh. Uh, uh, we need something more click, <laughs> click baby. We need something more click baby. Um, let's see. Um, I'm gonna put some more coals on and then I think this would be done. Oh yeah. That's a good question. Drunk boys is a joke, by the way. Don't take that seriously. Um, <laughs> let's see. This one should be called... I don't know. I can't think of a name. Yeah. We might need to wait till we're like 100% sober to come up with something. Uh, something with beer. I don't know. Have a beer with us. Something like that. I'll do that. Or have one on us. Well, they're not having one on us. I know, but still. <laughs> A beer with the boys. But how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You went ten deep. Ten deep at this point. Which doesn't seem like a lot. Some of these are real strong. And we're trying to go through them pretty quick. That's the name right there, 10 Deep. That's what I was thinking. 10 Deep, that's the name. Which we're gonna be 12 Deep if we do those. Nah, no, we're not gonna do those. All right, cool, because we've already <laughs> had this one before. So I, I also brought two more. Uh, Devil's Backbone has a Vienna Lager. We had that on the very first episode. I brought that as kind of a palate cleanser or a... Uh, Devil's Backbone, delicious by the way. Yeah, I, I enjoy Devil's Backbone. That's. The Vienna Lager is absolutely my favorite from them. Uh, I get it. I get. I don't know how many cases before I leave Virginia. Then the other one I have is a wheat beer called the Love. Uh, it's from uh, Star. What is, let me see that. I think it's just Star Brewery. Star Hill. Star. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Star Hill Brewery. It's called the Love. It's a wheat beer. Uh, Star I don't really like that though, as a wheat beer. It's really good. I really enjoy it. Um, take it home. So Star Hill, it's uh, out in Crozet, Virginia, uh, which is about maybe a 30 minute drive uh, outside of Charlottesville. Um, it's right next to uh, Music Today, which is a, a distributor of kind of like Amazon. But of like music stuff. So, did you have anything else to add, Hayden? I think we're gonna go ahead and end it now and wrap it up. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say except just keep trying new things. Don't be afraid to try something new. Even yeah, even definitely. Like don't, don't be afraid to try new stuff. Uh, all this, I mean, I've only had. This one before, which is the nacho bait. Uh, that's really the only one I've had before that I can think of. Uh, that I've, I've really enjoyed. That, and, oh, and the wells, banana bread. 
Um, I have had that one before, but it was a, a while. So, uh, again, don't be afraid to try new stuff. Uh, join us again on the next episode. We probably won't be getting as drunk. We'll have more news and whatever updates going on. So, again, from uh, from us here at Cloud9 with As the Coals Burn, I'm Nick. And I'm Hayden. I'm back here. I need some bathroom, sorry. <laughs> And uh, again, thank you to White Squirrel. Thank you again to White Squirrel and Cloud9 for uh, giving us a space. Uh, I'm back. You're back. Just in time <laughs> to leave. Just in time. We're probably going to get back there and uh, join the other guys for some league. See what happens. Have a good one, guys.